Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and welcome to my live stream. A little uh, quick shout out to those who are uh, who have said hello in the chat. Uh, hello to AA, hello to Jay from the House of Moth, Crazy Tech Reviews, hello, hello to Mystery Margo, Trina is here, Christopher Bourne is here, uh, Divisions, uh, Jeff Barnard, Michael Mullet, Dana Sibira, hello, welcome. Um, sad Mac three five six. Who else? I've got anyone else here? Hernhafen. Her, 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 Hello there. Uh, Emily. Um, so I think, have I have I said hello to everyone? Jeff. Yeah, I said hello to Jeff. Yep. So hello to everyone. Thank you for uh, for tuning in. Uh, Malto Knight though. Hello. Um, I uh, I apologise for missing out on a live stream. Oh, Brian Wong. Hello. I uh, apologise for missing out on a live stream last weekend. I was off holidaying, um, so uh, I was unable to um, uh, to uh, live stream. Yes, it was just not uh, not at all possible. I was not in. Uh, I didn't have any equipment or anything like that around me. I was in a completely different location. So uh, anyhow, I uh, thought I'd try and make up for it today uh, by uh, doing a little bit of work on a Macintosh LC two. Uh, this one belongs to Madeline McAndrews, who uh, is often present at my streams. Doesn't, doesn't look like she's here today, but that's fair enough. It is in the middle of Saturday. Not everyone can turn up uh, here in Australia. Um, Neo B, hello. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so anyhow, this uh, I'll just get, jump across to my little side view here if I can. Hang on. Hang on. Here we go, there's my side view, here's my Macintosh LC2, and as you can see, it's the whole thing, rather than just me looking at the board. Um, and basically, this has been dropped off to me, and uh, the customer has said, um, I want everything sorted. Um, now, of course, the, uh, the description in the video might be a little bit deceptive, in that it says, full resto. Well, full interior resto, it's not like I'm going to be doing, um, um, what do you call that thing? Uh, retro writing or anything like that. It's just going to be sorting out what's inside them. So um, the the Macintosh LC2. Um, I, I, I'm actually going to be working on a video shortly where I'm going to be talking over the common failings of different computers because I keep getting situations. I keep seeing situations where. Uh, people are jumping onto the Facebook groups and they're saying, I've got this particular problem with my computer and uh, and then, you know, I might say, uh, you need to recap it. And then people come back and go, oh, recapping isn't the answer for everything. Or more importantly, someone jumps on and says, I have a problem with a Mac SE. And someone jumps on and says, recap it. And because I have to then jump on and say, well, actually with an SE, it's probably not recapping. It's probably something else. Um, or a Mac Plus or something like that. So... I'm planning to do a video where I kind of outline the different computers and the different problems. Now, of course, the LC2 is one where I will just basically come out and say, recap it. Zombie Geek 33, hello. Um, <laughs> selective retro binding with the UV mask, retro UV mask laser. That's what I was going to do that, wasn't I? I was going to set the laser up and just sort of point it at a bit of plastic and see if we ended up with a bright spot. I didn't get around to doing that, sorry. Um, so... Um, did I say hello to Neo B? In case I didn't, hello Neo B. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah. So anyhow, the um, the I I really have no issue with saying to someone who has an LC two, you need to get it recapped, because even if they're not suffering direct problems rela relating to leaky caps on those, they still need to be done. Uh, we'll have a look at this one later and see how this one looks. I don't know if this one works. Let's just plug in and see if we get a chime out of it. I might just take the lid off. Uh, LC2s, thankfully, predate the brittle plastic, so these ones tend to not snap. But if this was an LC, say, 475, these things, these little tabs here, you risk uh, snapping them off every time you take the case off. What I do with an LC575 is, uh, if we just get a little bit of a zoom in here, Oh, it's right in the middle. How perfect is that? You can see this plastic tab here. There's a little plastic ridge just there. It's going out of focus. I apologize for that. This little plastic ridge here. And that's what actually snaps onto the underside of the board. I, what I tend to do is I get a Dremel and I, I get rid of that little plastic ridge so that there's no little bump on the end there. So this there is and then just flat. 
So it means that when you put it on the board, it's not actually clicking into place, it's just resting there. Now, obviously, the downside to that is it's nothing actually holding the case on, but on the upside, when you lift it up, you don't have to bend those tabs. Because LC475, Quadra 605, this sort of same, virtually the same size, same shape box, completely different plastic. Uh, and <laughs> virtually every time you try and take something out of them, they, um, they break. So anyhow, um, because almost everything is held in here by a little plastic tabs that you have to bend to then lift them out. So like the fan here is held in with these two little plastic tabs holding it in and you have to pull them apart to get the fan out. If this is like an LC475, you just pull them apart and they just go snap off. Uh, they're shocking things. So here we've got our, our little, uh, uh, look, I haven't even looked at the chat. I'm so out of practice. I haven't done this in a while. Let me look at the chat. <sighs> um, I broke the exact tab off my main Kurt Quarter 605 just an hour ago. Yep, there you go. Um, uh, hello to, uh, is that Carly? Hello, Reg regards from Argentina. Hello there. Right back at you. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, anyhow, yeah, we, we all know the problem with these brittle plastics, but thankfully the LC2 is not one of them. So, yes, sure, you need to be careful. The plastics won't be as strong as they were when they first came out, but they don't have that... What do, they, the, what do they call them? The, the, the spindler plastics, I think, because they were all manufactured during the time of spindler at Apple. I think it's. I think that's what it is, what people say. This one here has a network card in it, connected. I think it's a network card. Yes, it is a network card with the, um, what's it called? AAUI or is it, I think it's AAUI connector. So this one here, this little connector there that you uh, clip, uh, um, you know, sort of your uh, your little dongly type thing to choose what sort of output you want. Now, the reason why this connector was around was because around about this time there was still no uh, kind of set standard for the sort of Ethernet you were using. Some people were using thick Ethernet, some people were using thin Ethernet, some people were using um, 10 base T Ethernet. And so this allowed you to just get more of a generic port and then you put the little dongle on the end to choose what sort of Ethernet you were using, thick, thin, or, uh, or 10 base T. Now, of course, fast forward all this time, 10 base T1, uh, using, you know, sort of using a kind of star type configuration with a hub, you know, 10 base T, 100 base T, gigabit, you know, all that. that that's, that's what won. Uh, so it, it makes something like this seem a little bit silly these days because, I mean, who's using, you know, thin coaxial ethernet these days. No one. Um, hello, uh, uh, Aim, is Aim Lapierre? Aim Lapierre? Um, uh, all things DG. Um, uh, I have a power, so crazy tech reviews. Uh, that's Logan is saying, I have a power book 160 I just got and it's plastics are just like sand. Unbelievably brittle, yes, I know indeed. Um, it's yeah, it's a shocker. I mean, what are you going there? Where are you going there? Huh? Uh, interestingly, I've mentioned, made some little mention of this. This is I'm in the process at the moment of uh, uh, trying to build some of my own SCSI to SDs, proving to be a little bit more difficult than I originally thought. Uh, the reason being that if you want to put firmware on these things, you actually need to program the chip first to be able to connect to the USB. So I'm in, I'm in the process of waiting for an ARM chip program and to see if I can actually get that working. But anyhow, we'll, we'll see. see what happens. I am also in the process of trying to organize some sort of uh, reseller thing going on uh, for SCSI 2SDs here in Australia because currently here in Australia to buy SCSI 2SD is extremely expensive because of the postage costs. So, uh, Thomas Armstrong, hello. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. So here's our network card. Just a little tip for anyone who's ever removing these network cards from uh, an LC. Um, don't try and just gonna, don't try and lift them up by like you know lifting them up like that. Um, what I generally do with these is I hold them and I gently wiggle them side to side until they come off. So like this because the plastics will break on the on the little plug. Tom Barber, hello. Thank you for joining. Got quite the gang here today, haven't I? Uh, a few f sort of familiar faces and uh, and then a few newies by the sound of things. Uh, okay, so anyhow, there's our Ethernet network card. This one is a oh Sonic Apple computer. So this is the genuine Apple article using a uh, uh, Sonic Ethernet chip thingy there. 
Uh, obviously, drivers are still available. Or you can still get hold of drivers uh, for these today. They're still around, so that's all good. But yep, that's the actual Apple branded one that uh, with this one. So that's isn't that nice? Uh, then we've got our hard drive here. I was going to test this, wasn't I? So let's put some power in it. And uh, if anyone is hearing a hum in the background, there are two things causing a hum in here. Number one is my um, uh, MacBook, or sorry, my Mac Pro that I'm using for live streaming. Uh, I really need to repaste the CPU and whatnot, and the fans are going pretty hardcore at the moment with me live streaming. And then, of course, I have my fume extractor here as well, which makes a bit of a whistle. So if anyone is hearing a hum in the background, that's where the sound is coming from. Um, okay, now, uh, switch him on. Okay, well, that's good. This one is already working, so that's fantastic. I mean, obviously, I haven't connected a screen to it, but to get a chime is always a very good sign. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, it's just always nice to know if something is working before you start. Uh, some of them I don't switch on because they look so bad I'm worried about doing additional damage, but this one doesn't look too bad. So, you know, my general feeling with this one is uh, there wasn't a great risk in switching it on and testing it out. So, um, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Let's uh, undo this. Undo this. So I've just got to undo all the bits. So I've got to unplug the fan, the speaker, the SCSI cable, the SCSI power. The power supply. Are we going to recap the power supply as well? Did I say that? I'm not sure if I actually mentioned it specifically, but we're going to recap the power supply. I was going to say we would do the floppy drive. Are we going to do the floppy? No, but this is a... Well, actually, we might have to. This has got surface mount caps on it. Um, I was I was originally just going... Because oh, I thought this was going to be a, uh, uh, a auto-inject drive, but it's a later manual, manual inject drive. So, um, oh God, come on, you thing, you dag nabbit. All right, so I've unplugged all these things. Now, hopefully I can get this board out without having to remove anything else. Uh, it's held in with these little plastic tabs on the side, which, of course, you have to bend backwards to pull it out. And, of course, if this was a Quadra 605 or a Mac, uh, LC475, the moment I bent those things back, they would just snap off. But hopefully that won't happen with this one. <sighs> right, um... Okay, just checking here. Dana does stuff. Hello, Dana. LC3 capacitor fast. Well, this is actually LC2. You've got too many eyes in there by the look of it. Um, but that's okay. Not judging. Um, all right. Come on, out to come. There we go. So just sliding that out there. Sorry, this isn't the best camera view I know. I should have a camera up there, shouldn't I? Up there. Up there. Listing as I head off, go on to work on a PC. Yep, that's what that's a good thing with live streams. You can listen to them while you're working. Okay, so we get this to the point where this just comes out, and then we've got our our logic board there ready to go. We've got uh, well, these look like they're probably two megabyte sims here, so two twos, I'm guessing, and then a 512. Oh, someone's cooking something nice. <sighs> Yummy. It smells like onions and butter and curry and stuff like that. Oh, that smells good. Um, and a 512 KB RAM sim on this one as well. So this one's all good. Um, I don't remember how much these have on board. Does anyone remember how much an LC2 has on board? Is it two? Two, four, six, something like that? Is it, I, I can't imagine they had more than two, but I could be wrong. Um, yeah. Two by, yeah, two megabyte. Eight, yeah, two megabyte. Two megabyte. Okay, so... Logic board, let's put him to... I, I better put this, um, the bits into a bag because a bag is too small. A bag is bigger because I have a system here and I want to make sure that all of my customers' bits and pieces all get back to them and I don't end up putting the wrong bits into the wrong computer and all that sort of stuff. Um, I want to apologise to my other... Mac yucking friends who have been doing who are doing repairs, people like Jay from House of Moth and Steve from Mac eighty four, who uh, would uh, like to try out my uh, job ticketing system that I built. Um, I am very close to having it available for uh, for a bit of beta testing. Um, but let's just go on to this job one he job ticket here. This is job number seventy two. So let's write seventy two onto here seven. 
So that's 72 jobs I've taken on since I uh, started this job ticketing system. Um, okay, yep, this is the right one. Yep, good, 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 good. Right. 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 I make it that I have 34 people watching at the moment. Um, the old uh, YouTube live how many people that are watching at the moment is a little bit on the sketchy side so you can't really trust it but i think that's how many uh getting a lot of business yeah yeah i am i've got way more than i can really handle at the moment i'm just working my way through it i've got up just up in the house now ready for for work i've got um there's a a lisa two that needs work on the io board i have a uh Fairly newish iMac. Um, I have two Amiga 1200s, an LC, another LC2, other than this LC2, an LC1, and then I've got a box of bits. I'm not even sure what's in that box of bits. I've got to go and have a look and work out what needs doing there. Um, but anyhow, that's just uh, that's just that. Um, and then of course, I've got a computer here. I worked on in a live stream a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Color Classic with no Color Classic Two, uh, which is the Performer Four Seven Five, I think. Uh, no sound, and I still don't have sound with that. I found a whole bunch of really corroded-looking vias on the board. They're the little tubes that run from one layer to another layer on the board. Uh, so I'm going to probably have to go in and run wires for a lot of those. But the problem I have with them is those they're full of. Uh, UV mask so I've got to poke the UV solder mask out so that I can then run a wire through the hole that's a very tedious process it's one of the reasons I haven't live streamed because it's boring um, all right so uh, there's me putting all the little bits that I won't be needing for recapping to one side and then while we're here let's pull the uh, power supply out that's just got a little clip on either side here and then up she comes once again if that was a quarter 605 or a four, LC-475, I would have just snapped the plastic. Um, so, let's get all these bits. Oh, let's take the floppy drive out, because this is going to need doing as well. Crikey. All right, there we go. Shell of a thing. So, this is an Apple computer hard drive in this. Uh, I think probably the original. Uh, oh, it's a one gigabyte, so no, probably not the original. Uh, one gigabyte... But it is an Apple branded one, but they, I don't think they came with a one gigabyte back in the day. Uh, uh, uh. Let's just get this case and put it out of the way. Oh. Excuse me. Okay, so floppy drive, you can wait here. Be patient. Your time will come. Power supply. Which one should I, should I start on? Should I start on the logic board or the power supply? That's around the wrong way. Or logic board or the power supply. Who would like? Who would like to uh, put a vote forward for uh, which one I work on first? Got some little jumpery things here. Uh, I need to find a spot for them, don't I? There, that's where everything goes. PSU, PSU, PSU. Wow, look at all the PSUs. Wow. Okay. All right. Logic board. See you later. Um, Actually, just before I do the power supply, I just want to have a little look at this under the light. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see. I'm going to see if I can get the, the angle right. But this is why I keep saying to people, you know, um, oh, you know, LC4, you know, sorry, LC2s so have got to be a recap. Okay, so you look at that and you go, oh, not too bad. It actually looks looks pretty good. Did you see when I the light catches it? You see how that is just one great big smear of goop? If I just get that light in exactly the right position, you can just see it's all the way around here. Going all the way around there, down there, down there, down there. That is just one great big mass of capacitor goop. So, you know, when I say to people, um, you know, if someone jumps onto a live, onto a, a, a group and says, I've got an LC2, you know, I say, you need to recap it. And people say, don't say that unless you've tested it first. You don't know that. I do know that. If you've got an LC2, it is at an age that will have leaked. Will have. Not might have. Will have. So anyhow, that's just uh, that's just me having a whinge. There we go. So let's put that aside. 
let's have a look at our power supply. Scunge. Scunge indeed. Uh, the LCG, they came in both auto and manual, manual eject case designs, but it doesn't seem entirely date related. Yes, no, you're exactly right. I mean, I'm sure there are LC475s that have auto inject, but here's an LC2 with a manual inject. So I'm not going to... Oh, another thing we're going to do with this LC2 is I'm going to stick an FPU on it. Uh, and you know why we do that? Because we can. Because they built this board so that it could take an FPU and then Apple cheaped out and didn't put a socket there. So we're going to just say, we're going to give Apple the bird and we are going to put a socket on there and say, I want, I want to take this FPU situation into my own hands. Now, who can tell me, actually I should probably wait till Steve gets here because he would really want to say it, but... Yeah, you know, I'm sure there are enough people here. No, who can tell me what was really one of the fundamental problems with the LC2? <laughs> I just need to get the right size screwdriver for this. Huh. There's something scraping one of your mics a bit. Okay, so let me just uh, turn it down. La la la. That's, oh, oh, we've got a, there we go, how about I, I think it's the cable, happens when I touch this one, I'll try not to touch this one, there we go, okay, uh, slow data bus or something wasn't it, yes that's exactly right, so it was a 32 bits, 32 bit CPU on a 16 bit bus. These things were always destined to be slow, but that was by design. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that was Apple were deliberately making a slow Mac. Uh, they of course had a, a, a RAM upgrade ceiling. It doesn't matter what size um, chips you put in them. I think they only expand up to 10 megabytes if my memory serves correctly. So, you know, you can fill them up with 16 megabyte SIMs and you're still only going to get 10 megabytes of RAM. I think that's, I think that's, uh, that's correct. Yes, uh, yes, it is a dodgy cable. I have a bunch of cables. I have good quality cables. This one does not look like a good quality cable. So I think I might replace it with good quality cable because you guys, you guys deserve quality. Um, okay, I've just done, 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 done two screws. Now, if I remember rightly, I don't think I need to take that one off yet, but I could be completely wrong. Um, I've done this before. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Let's go. No, I do need to, need to take that one off. So, that's a big flat one there. Undoesing that. Max Button, hello. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I, uh, I didn't see you arrive there. My apologies. Um, okay, so, incidentally, uh, Max, uh, just so that you know, here are some polymer capacitors that are going to be used on your Macintosh LC. And as I mentioned before, one of the distinctive features of a lot of polymer cap capacitors is that they have their markings in like bright colors, cyan and purple and things like that. So anyhow, there you go. So they're all ready for going on an LC. Um, I often get asked about the capacitors that I use, you know, where tantalums versus electrolytics and polymers and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I generally cap with uh, tantalums. I like them. They're nice. They're reliable. Um, if people ask for electrolytics, I can do that. Or, you know, in the instance of this one, I'm going to be putting polymers on there. Uh, polymers, of course, are like an electrolytic capacitor. They look like them, but they don't have liquid in them. They have a powder. So they don't leak. Um... Watching on my TV, so I couldn't comment. Yes, that does happen, doesn't it? Um, let's run 16 patch wires and make the bus 32 easy. That doesn't sound easy at all. That sounds extremely complicated. Um, right, so, um, power supply. So we've got to pull this fella apart um, and get this out. And there's two screws, I think. No, I don't need to undo. Oh, oh no, I do need to undo that. This one looks different to ones that I've done before. Or maybe I'm just thinking that it is. 
maybe I just think it's different and it's not really. Um, but I do need to take this out. And that is definitely screwed in there. So that's going to come undone. So if it is different to the one I've done before, what a pain that'll be. I may not even have the caps for it. Coming out. That's good. Um, now this has been powered on uh, just before. So uh, what I'm going to have to do is probably discharge this big fat capacitor here because this one's going to have some power in it. Now, I just want, just want to warn you, I am going to make the, the biggest sort of girl's blouse noise when I do this because it always freaks me the hell out. All right? Okay? Shall I zoom in on it? I'm going to zoom in on it. I hate doing this. I bloody hate doing it. It always freaks me out. See, that there and that there? I need to make contact with this screwdriver between those two there. And it is going to go pop. It's going to freak me out. I hate doing this. I hate doing this. Uh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I need my glass. No, no. Mm. Mm. Does someone want to come do this? Does someone want to come do this for me? Oh, far out. Ah, uh, what a letdown. All right, I don't think I did it. <sighs> yeah, I was a little bit nervous during that. That's crazy. Um, let's just check and make sure that there is no power with the old multimeter. Oh, what a fizzer. What a fizzer. Yeah, okay. All right. Problem solved. Everything's fine. It, uh, it obviously just discharged at that time, so. Mm. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Let's get myself back together again. Now, I want to uh, disconnect this, um, this part here for recapping. Uh, it doesn't actually have plugs. It's soldered, so I'm going to have to desolder it to get it out. Um, so that's a bit of a bugger, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to have to probably put my goggles on for that because my eyesight ain't too good. Okay. Simon Slater, hi from the Isle of Man. Well, hello, right back at you. Uh, yeah, come on, stay hard, stay, stay awake, work hard at it. You can do it. I'll try and be interesting. I'll just yell loudly every now and again in case you start falling asleep. Um, all right, so we've got a brown and a blue wire here. I'm hoping this is labeled. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. NL, N for neutral, L for live. Live is the brown. Neutral is the blue. And then we've just got to get some solder out of that. Am I going to use the brucinator? I did not call this the brucinator. That is a name given by someone else, but I don't mind calling it that. This is my solder sucker. And I'm just going to suck some solder. Bing! Uh, incidentally, for anyone who has been uh, following the saga of the UM machine, the machine that uh, I suck solder with my motorized one that uh, stopped working because it stopped heating properly, it's been fixed. So I can suck solder with impunity now. Um, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, here we go. Right. Just using some wick here to get rid of a little bit of excess solar so that these plugs will come out. I think these plugs, have, uh, the cables have actually got little barbs on the end of them. So uh, I'm probably going to need to give them a little squeeze with the pliers to get them out. We'll see. Do, do, do pliers. I had some. They were here a moment ago. Oh, there we are. I put them under things. That's what I do. Yep. 
Little barbs on the wire. Often the case with these wires, they put little metal prongs on the end, you know, with little barbs on them, so when you push them through. This might seem like a bit of a pain, a lot of work to go through to un undo these wires, but when you're actually working on the board, it, it just makes life so much easier to not have this bit of metal hanging off the end of it. Oh, I just realized that the customer didn't actually ask me to recap this, but I know this customer and I know that they like to have things sorted out and particularly considering this one has got some corrosion on it, I think it's probably not a bad idea to recap it. Uh, typically with these, I wouldn't bother about recapping this guy here. Even though it looks like it's bulging, it's not. That's just a piece of plastic on the top. It's not actually the aluminium there. So uh, the capacitors that I will be replacing will be these guys here. I'm just going to get my little uh, my little guide and see if it is indeed the same power supply because we do know that there were often different versions of power supplies. So this is my uh, this is my little collection of cheat sheet sheets here. I need to go and get some more of these these refills because I've run out of space in this. It'll fold for all my uh, recapping guides. I've got some of the early ones here. These are some of the um, sort of prototype guides before I'd neaten them up for the website. They're going to be worth a lot of money one day. Um, there's a, uh, uh, what is it? Macintosh TV tuner card. Don't get them very often. Hate getting them when I do that. There's an 2SI power supply with mud all over it. Ugh. I'm going way too far into the future here. Got the old, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, caddy loading CD-ROM drive. I've actually got one of those here at the moment, and I think it's it's a goner. It will need recapping. Uh, oh, jeez, what's that? Oh, here we are, LC power supply. Look at that. And yes, this one is completely friggin' different. Damn. Oh, damn. You know what that means? It means I've got to take a photo of it because I have to make a guide in the future. Also means I have to take each cap off one at a time because I don't have a guide. Whoops. Genuine Bruce private. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyone who watched Macyak yesterday will know that when I pull out my phone to take a photo, I always give the lens a little bit of a rub with the edge of my T-shirt. Um... And I do that so that uh, I don't get smeary photos. All right, let's uh, let's take a photo, shall we? A click, a click, a click, a click. I wonder if I should do this on a white piece of paper. Probably makes sense. It'll look nicer because this is super fancy. It's going to end up on my website. I should be doing this with my fancy camera, but you know. Click. A clicker. A click. 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 All right, hopefully that's it. Oh, so, yeah, I've got to make another guide. Not right now, because that's a little bit boring to watch, I've got to tell you. We've got, we've got recapping to do now. Of course, the biggest problem we face is that because this is a different power supply to the ones I've got, it probably has different size capacitors, and I probably don't have those capacitors. Well, I won't say probably. There's a good chance I do, but we'll see. So on the this is uh, 400 WV, 400 volts. This one was 385 volts. So uh, and then what do we got here? Let's see what this guy. Is. That one was an 8.2 microfarad, 50 volt. This one is a a lot hard, harder for me to see. I'm going to need the old microscope here because I am going blind. Well, I'm not really. This one is a 47 microfarad, 25 volt. I think I might have one of those. All right, well, let's just start and go, shall we? I mean, we'll just work through it as we go. Face these problems as they come. First thing I'll do, I will grab my 25 volt capacitors. Uh, uh, and we'll see. Uh, if I have a 47. 
47.25. Yay! This is, uh, the brand is, I think, Worth Electric, something like that. Uh, they make a lot of these smaller sized ones. These are, I, the ones I always choose are the longest lifespan ones I can find. Uh, and obviously 105 volt, 105 degrees as well. So, um, yeah. Um, obviously when we're putting caps in, we want ones that are going to last as long as possible. And capacitors lifespans are measured in hours, thousands of hours operating at their, uh, maximum temperature and this is one I think this is a 5,000 hour so this is in theory will run for 5,000 hours running at its maximum temperature it will last a lot longer if it's not running at its maximum temperature 47 microfarad 25 just double checking let's jump across to the micros microscope view here here we go here's a 47 microfarad 25 oh oh this doesn't look like it's white balanced it's it's changed again this dag mammoth this camera it has this tendency to just forget the settings that I put on it. 47.25, can you see it? 47.25. So let us, let's uh, take this cap out. Um, this one is there. It is, see the uh, corrosion I was talking about? So that is the capacitor. Let me point to it with some tracers. It's the capacitor there. And we're going to get some... I'm just going to use solder wick for this one rather than any fancy machinery or suckers or anything like that. Um, I just think it's going to be quicker and easier that way. And that's what it's all about. Quick and easy. Easy breezy. Okay. Liars. It's very easy to freak, uh, freak, freak Dana does stuff out. Just talk about, uh, talk about pliers. Triggered. Okay. He had, uh, he had a bit of a mischief with some pliers. Boop. There we go. Out she comes. Well, that smells. Which means that's been leaking. Well, it's not too bad, but the smell definitely does give it away. Uh, another 105 there. So there we go. 105 uh, uh, degrees. 105. Who's that? Is it a pigeon or a chicken? Right, so let's put a new one in. Let's hope there is something on this to tell me which is the positive and negative cycle so should, yeah we go there we go there's a little positive there we can see that that's where our positive needs to go on the old electro electrolytics the negative has the stripe on it just like that um and it is very springtime here at the moment so if everyone's hearing uh you're my hero oh well thank you very much drake 9800 i'm not sure i deserve those accolades but never mind um the um uh, yes, it's spring here, so lots of bird noises. So if anyone's just like, what is that? It's bird noises. Lots of bird noises. Okay, plus, there we go. We're going to put that there. We're going to bend that there. Just bend these pins a little bit. Not a lot. Just bend them a little. Uh, you know what I'm going to do before I put that in? I'm going to clean these pads. They look terrible. Um, terrible. I might just actually start this off with a scalpel. Nice. Nice. I uh, should put some... I was try, trying to avoid putting flux on this because if I, when I, I flux it, it means I'm going to end up having to clean the thing in the ultrasonic. I don't want to have to clean it in the ultrasonic, but I am going to have to clean it in the ultrasonic. Yeah, get some nice fresh solder on there, make it all look nice and clean and tidy, and then we'll wick it away. Oopsie. 
Are, or are the Trace and PSUs like this thicker than the ones on the logic board? Yes, definitely are. Um, the uh, certainly some parts of these are carrying much higher voltages, so they will be uh, uh, they will definitely be thicker. Uh, there he goes. Plus on the plus side, negative on the negative side. Then we can bend these out like I did before. A little bit of a bend there just to hold them in place. Then let's get some solder onto these pins. Start with that one. I'm going to just then push it from the other side. Melt it. You're, going to, you're not going to be able to see this very well, sorry. Melt it as I push it flush on the surface. Because I want it flush. Just like a toilet. Okay. There we go. Make sure all those places I took solder away from have got solder on them now. And there we go. That's uh, looking good. Cut the excess off. And that's, uh, that's in position. I can give that a bit of a wipe with some alcohol. Massive moth. Jay, welcome to the live stream. Uh, how are you going with your 3400C there, buddy? What are you doing in the basement? How are you in the basement? Um, what are the black dots? The black dots are corrosion. Corrosion. Um, this one is going to spend a little bit of quality time in the ultrasonic cleaner. I think there's nothing else for it. Uh, so, that's that. Um, what do you reckon that sponge is? Yeah. Yeah. Looks a bit unsavoury, doesn't it? I don't think it's there on purpose, but it doesn't look very nice. Right, so that is one capacitor down. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to go. And of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, there is always a possibility with this that I'm not going to be able to recap the whole thing because I do not have a guide for this one. And therefore, I, um, um, I may not actually have all the caps for it. So, uh, how am I going to... Yeah, okay. All right. Yep. All right. All right. All right. I know. Yep. It's all good. So, let's have a look at these little thin ones here. I wouldn't be surprised if they're both the same, but I can't see them. I can't see them. There we go, here we go. That one's a 120 microfarad 10. 120 microfarad 10. Okay, let's see what we can find. Ultrasonic King stuff in the basement. Mm. Ugh. My hands are sticky. I think I might put some gloves on. Have I got any left here? Or do I need to bring some more down? Oh, there's still some here. My hands get so sticky. Uh, this is the special putting gloves on live stream. I do actually have thicker gloves than these ones. These are just latex gloves. They're a bit thin and they do break easily. But the thick gloves that I have, I've just been un unable to buy any that have powder inside them. Uh, and I have a lot of trouble putting them on because my hands are fit. Um, 120 microfarad 10 volt is what I said, wasn't it? Let's have a look at what I've got in the way of 10 volt. Ah. <sighs> John Roberts, hello. Random question. Anyone know why the RAM disk option isn't visible on any of my 030 Max? Just not supported? I don't know. I wanted to say 120 microfarad. Okay, well, I don't have a 10 volt of those. 270, 470. Okay, so let's see if we've got like a 16. I've got a sneaking suspicion I won't, but we'll look anyway. Ah, so that one might be one that I can't recap today, which will suck. Suck, I tell you, suck. Uh, 22, 47, 100, 220, 1000, 470, 1200. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? 40, what? That's not 4700. What's that one? 120, 16!
Yeah. I haven't even put these in a labelled container yet. I wonder what I bought them for. I bought them for something. I need two of those. Brendan McDonald, hello. Okay. Tim, hello. Just Tim. Hello, Tim. Um, right, big hands club here. Yeah, that's me. Um, it looks like I'm wearing a boxing glove even when I'm not. Right. It's 120 microfarad, 16 volt. Uh, I'm replacing 120 microfarad, 10 volt. Uh, obviously, we've gone up in voltage. Going up in voltage is okay. Going down is not. So, there. So, let's get these two off, shall we? Oh, pardon me. Just had breakfast before, so it's still uh, giving me a little bit of grief. Now, when you're looking at the bottom of these things, you can often tell where the capacitors are because they are they sort of they they kind of look like this, where you can see uh, uh, kind of like um, it's hard to describe. Let me think think of try and find a good way of describing it. Um, but you can just sort of tell it's it's those two and those two. Um, see, that's a capacitor there. You can kind of tell that one is. That one is there, most probably. Um, it's just, it, it, you can just sort of often tell in the layout by the way they they are structured with these, um, uh, these traces. But I'm not an electronics person, so there's probably all sorts of fancy words I could be using. But, you know, I just, I just fix the stuff. I don't understand it. I have a working knowledge. Uh, did anyone answer the uh, RAM disk question? Because I have no idea. I'm not even sure that you can do a RAM disk with them. I mean, other w without using like uh, additional software. What OS are you using on that 030? Just out of curiosity, John Roberts. Wick it away. These ones don't look anywhere near as bad, which is good. Uh, am I, uh, did I uh, desolder the right things? Let's just see. Does this one come out? Yes. Yay. Does this one come out? <laughs> come on. And I've just torn off a little bit of my glove. So that lasted a long time, didn't it? caught on a pin from the underside of this. XM5 can create a RAM disk boot from it too. Pretty sure it's just the default memory control panel RAM disk. Okay. That's 7.5. Okay, John Thomas tried 7.1, 7.5 and hacked 8. Okay, well that sounds to me like your uh, your um, SE30 absolutely doesn't want to do it. Um, now I would wager that if you were to put a um, uh, a big mess of wires uh, rominator in there, you'd probably be able to do it. Um, right, so I whip those out. I don't think I need to do as much work. Yeah, see, these are all pretty clean already. I don't really need to do anything to these pads, so we can just plonk these in. Plonkety plonk. Um, let's just check these, make sure I'm doing like thing 120 microfarad 16. And then as usual, we're going to put the stripe on the other side. Why did my watch just go off? Time to stand. My watch is telling me it's time to stand. I'll stand next time I need capacitors. How about that? Is that a deal? Is that a deal, watch? Plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay. Good. Let's uh, bend some pins on the other side, shall we? I actually had someone on, on doing a, you know, on, on doing comments on my, one of my videos once saying, never bend the pins on the other side. Um, I have no idea why they said that. And I can understand you wouldn't necessarily want to bend them down too far, but bending them enough so, uh, so they don't fall out. I, if, I don't know, is it, why, why object to that? I just don't get it. Some people, some people weird, man, weird. Okay, come on. And here's another one. Uh, 
Lane Brown. Hello, welcome to the stream. Uh, I came, then watched the car and then forgot about this. <laughs> Don't worry, Lane, we were just killing time till you got here. We are looking at an LC2 power supply. And much to my annoyance, it is uh, different to the one that I have a guide for. So if you're having a look at the guide in my um, in my uh, description, video description, it is wrong. It is not for this particular power supply. I wonder if there's something written on this that will identify what the difference is. Where's the top? Where's the top? Here we are. Here's the top. So this one is an Aztec. So I wonder what the one is, the other one that I did, I'll be able to see because it's, it's of my own LC, so it's an Aztec power supply. Uh, I think with the, with the two main ones that Apple were using, they were like GE was one and Aztec was the other, I think. Okay, just snipping off the excess of these pins. Snippity snip, snoopity snoop. And then we've got our two new little caps sitting in there now. We're working our way through it. That one's not flush on the board, but I won't tell anyone if you don't. Okay, what do we got here? I'll move on to this one next. Eh, can't see it. 470. Far out. 470. 16, I think. 470. 16. Okay, well, we've already got the 16 container out, haven't we? Haven't we? Well, I put it back. No, I didn't. 16. 470, I said, didn't I? Yeah. 470, 470, yeah, 470, 16, got one of them. Worth mentioning that when I buy replacement capacitors, I always look to buy Quarity. This one is a Nichicon, well-known brand. It does look like it's a different size though. Let's see if we've got a thinner one. I might have trouble getting that one in there. I do have thinner ones. What's this one? What's this one here? This one is also 105 degrees. I don't know what the brand is on this one, but it would be good if I bought it because I don't buy rubbish. Nope, not me. Nuh -uh. So I've got this little container of caps here that don't actually have a proper home. I've got more uh, 16 volt caps than fit in that container. So I'm going to have to break my 16 volt um, into two containers. So this one should fit. This one's a nice, nice fit, nice size match for that one. That's good. It's a lot smaller. That's just technology. Technology getting better. Things getting smaller. Miniaturization. Uh, take the solder when you snip. That made no sense to me after hobby said, Yeah, I've I've never. I've never had any issue with doing anything like that, snapping, uh, uh, you know, cracking the solder or anything like that. But I snip carefully. I am a careful snipper. Uh, just get rid of this. As you can see, when we're dealing with uh, these sorts of things, Wick just does such a good job of getting that solder off. Um, really nice. Really nice. All right, let's get this one out. That's come. Come on. Don't be stubborn. There we go. Okay, how's this one look? This one's looking pretty clean. Uh, let's see what my little machine says about it. Come on, fit in there. Two, one. Uh, stop it. It's not staying in there. Now the pin's just too short. I think I got it. No, I didn't. Stuff it. That's all I can say. Um, okay. Pins were too short. I couldn't get it to stay in there. So I lost my patience. I apologize. Sorry you had to see that. Um, okay. There we go. Bending the pins. Uh, to aside from your four hour stream is running so well, had many hours use. Good fun. Oh, that is good to hear. 
Yes, I love the old 2SI. I'm a big fan of the 2SI. I am, I am, I am. I got into another argument with someone about a 2SI on Facebook the other day when I said the power supply would need to be recapped. And someone came back and said, why don't you just test it first? It's like, dude, the 2SI power supply needs to be recapped. I don't care how it tests. If it hasn't been recapped, it needs to be recapped. Just trust me on this one, will you? <clears throat> Same as like a classic and a classic two. Their analog boards need to be recapped. I don't even need to look at them, I can tell you. Hey, what's wrong with my classic analog board? It needs to be recapped. How do you know that? Special powers. Special powers of I've seen so many of them before. Oh, this one's at a weird angle, isn't it? Look at this one. There's capacity here going across here. It'll be like diagonals. This will be this guy here. Okay. Don't like it. Yeah, the um, the the 2SI form factor for me is just very appealing. I just love the shape of the case. I'm looking at one right now. And I, I just love the shape of the case. In particular, if you get the, the monitor to go on top of it, I, I would always prefer to have the 13 inch, but the 12, you know, on the swivel stand, but the 12 inch without the stand just sits on top of that thing so beautifully. Um, Love it. Slow as molasses, though, I tell you. But as we've said before, if you really want to get good performance out of those things, run a period correct operating system. Don't just run out and stick like, the highest operating system you can put on it. Uh, it will run slower that way. You want to... Uh, you know, put it on the operating system that it came out with, which is probably like a, a, a variance of 6, maybe 607 or 608 or something like that. Probably what it came out with at the time. And uh, and you will find that it will run blazingly fast. And you might turn around and say, oh, but I want to be able to do this and I want to be able to do that. Well, you really have to question what it is you want to do with some of these old Macs. Um, if your goal is to get it on the internet, which seems to be the goal of most people these days, I do find... That a lot of people, when they get these old Macs, the first thing they want to do is get them onto the internet, uh, which is fun. It's a little bit of a novelty. I get that. But let's face it. Once you're on there, what are you going to do? Mm -mm -mm. Just cleaning these ones up a bit. These are a bit grubby. Um, yeah, I love the experts on Facebook. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I don't, I don't really mind. I don't engage with these people massively I, I generally just say what I have to say and I move on if they want to get into a fight they can just fight fight with nothing because it's just not what I'm not, not what I'm about on on those groups I mean people are generally on there asking for advice I'm giving the advice to the best of my knowledge um, if someone wants to turn around and question that and that's fine you know uh, what what was this one did I I took it off a thousand microfarad, ten volt. Pretty sure I have a sixteen if I don't have a ten. One thousand. One thousand. Uh, one thousand. Oh no, this is the wrong shape. Oh no, it'll fit. It'll fit. One thousand microfarad, ten volt. Rubicon, one hundred and five degrees. Rubicon, another well-known brand. Hey, you got other ones. Look at this. This one is a Nichicon. I'm going to do the Nichicon because it looks closer to what the original one looked like. <coughs> yeah. So here's my replacement. One thousand microfarad, ten volt. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Quite a 650, quite a bit to browse Facebook. That must be a slow experience. <laughs> um, yeah, look, seriously, whenever I'm, I'm getting an old computer set up, I usually just jump on to play a few games. 
on, on my SI, I've got um, things like Quark Express running on there. Um, you know, so I can do a little bit of desktop publishing if I want to. There are a lot of things you can actually still do on them, believe it or not. Uh, let's put this in here. So I'm going to have to re-watch this video afterwards for making my guide. Mind you, it's going to be a little bit difficult because the view is just through the microscope. But I'll figure it out. And some solder, some solder for those who like to say it that way. You will never get any argument from me about saying it that way. I'm not going to say you're saying it wrong. I'm just going to say you're saying it differently to how I say it. When did you turn up, Scarlet? Hello, Scarlet Swordfish. They're reading your, ch your uh, comments and just didn't even realise that you had turned up. I don't think you've been there for that very long. Uh, how are we doing on the views, by the way? I know you're looking. Oh, we've got 44 by my uh, my little YouTube thing. So hello to 44 of you. If you haven't said hello, please jump on and say hello. If I don't say hello back, don't take it personally. Sometimes I miss the comments. Um... Okay, let's move on to this little fat guy here, little stocky fat guy. 1216, I'm pretty sure I've got those as to whether I have them at the right size. Time will tell. Bibim. <coughs> oh yes, I uh, should do that, shouldn't I? Um, because... Um, I'm expected to do it these days, so I'm going to say, Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining, and don't forget to smash that like button. Okay. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, dear. I started something with that, didn't I? Even though I didn't actually start it. Dana from Dana does stuff. He doesn't even remember doing it. But uh, he was the one that first introduced me to smash that like button. And I just love the sound of it. <laughs> 1,216 volt. Okay, let's have a look here. At a 1,216 volt. Yes, sir. We move to our 16 volt container. 1216. Wow, these are different sizes. But it looks like the uh, the uh, uh, lead pitch. So <clears throat> when it comes to putting new capacitors into in place of old ones, obviously it needs to be able to physically fit in the space. That's important. This one here is uh, high, but it's still this one that I've got here. It's uh, I should change view, shouldn't I? Just so I show this. Make it more, more viewable. Yeah, I'll zoom in, in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Oh crap, crap! Oh, I shouldn't say that word. Advertisers don't like it. Um, so I've got a. So here's the old cap, yeah, and here's the new cap. Now it's taller, but thankfully it's not as tall as these ones here. So it's still going to fit height-wise. So. When you're coming to buy new capacitors or trying to work out whether you, the replacement is suitable. So this, there, there. Uh, that's fine with the height. It's narrower. No problem with narrower because obviously if it's fatter, you've got a bit of a problem. But narrower, it's fine. It's going to fit in the space. So that's awesome. The important thing that needs to be the same is the pitch between the leads. So the, the gap between those two, they call that the lead pitch. And if I hold these two together, the lead pitch is identical. So this is going to go into exactly the same hole. So even though this one is a completely different shape and size, it will go in there fine. This one here, it's all gold, which tells me it is a Panasonic. And Panasonic make really good capacitors, by the way. So, oh, Jay's back at his desk. Excellent. So we can get uh, some more insightful comments from him, one would hope. 
Right, so that goes in there. Where'd you get the 3400C from, uh, Jay, and why did you agree to do it? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking some of the uh, comments. I need my money back. You helped me mod my PS2 controller. Well, I'm pleased to hear it. I know nothing about PS2 controllers, so I'm assuming you... Uh, you will definitely have brought uh, a significant amount of your own knowledge to that. Okay, just making sure this is flush. I just like my capacitors to be flush. And I keep getting hooked. And keep wrecking my, uh, my gloves here. Looking good. Dude on Facebook had a sad. Figured I'd give it a go. Yep. I mean... I, I know exactly what's wrong with it. You posted some pictures. I've got... Oh, got one right here. Ah. Um, and... Where is it? There's one spot on the 3400. There's one particular spot where they just always have corrosion. And usually if you cracked capacitors here, it's it here. I think it's this is the spot. So this is a little bit dusty, it's been sitting there for too long. Yeah. And this is a good one. This is one of the better looking ones. Well, look at those traces. How do you like that? How do you like them apples? 3400C Joy. Uh, and you get cracked caps and stuff on these. Oh, man. I mean, look. Look. Yeah, that one. Does that look familiar to you, Jay? So uh, yeah, we uh, we know <laughs> we know that these guys have common problems because the one that Jay is looking at at the moment looks exactly the same. Exactly. All right. So there's another cap. We've only got two more caps to go, and I've got a sneaking suspicion these are the same size. So let's just have a look here. Just gonna. Wind this thing back up again. Why is my microscope sideways? Okay. 10, 10, 2200, 2200, 10. Yep, okay, let's see what we've got in the way of cans. Ah. Uh, 2210. Look at that. I've got two. I've got a whole stack of them, and they're Panasonic's. And so the world is a better place because of it. Uh, there we go. Uh, num, 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 num. I was just about to, and then Bruce started streaming. That is a lie. That is a J. Vry lie. We've actually, uh, these days, it's getting harder and harder to, uh, uh, to to live stream where we're not sort of stepping on each other's toes, in particular with uh, Steve, Mac84 Steve. Anyone who hasn't subscribed to Steve at Mac84 should subscribe to Mac84 on YouTube. Uh, and the reason, of course, is that um, he has uh, been picking up a lot of recapping work thanks to his guest appearance on the uh, spooky Mac SE30 video of uh, Sean at Action Retro, um, where he very successfully recapped and fixed that uh, SE30. And of course, um, through the number of views of that video, um, Steve's been getting quite a lot of uh, recapping work. And so he, like me, now has lots of things to live stream. Share with the world. In fact, where is he? He said he was going to turn up. 
What the hell, man? Okay. 10 volt, 2200 microfarad. There we go. We've got ourselves some little capacitors here. What brand are they? Don't know. It's not on here. So there we go. No idea what brand. There's my replacements. 2200. 10. And these ones are Pananasonics. Yeah, these are good. These are good long life ones. But expensive. Spare no expense. Right. Well, that's interesting. Um, that's there, that's there, Banana and a Sonic, generally known for uh, quality stuff. <laughs> Calling Jay a liar, I know. We are trying to get Jay to live stream all the time. All the time. We're saying, Jay, why don't you live stream that? No. Nope. First, he used to use the his uh, microscope camera as an excuse. Well, he fixed the microscope camera, so he doesn't have that excuse anymore. <clears throat> it's not fixed. I thought you, you went and got a different thing and you said fixed. You told me it was fixed. So were you lying then or are you lying now? <laughs> okay, so there's good, there's good. Okay, well, that's recapped. Um, there's plenty of evidence to show that it's been done, uh, including this video. So no one's going to question me. Uh, I may not need to actually ultrasonic this. I might be able to just get away with a bit of uh, alcoholing. <laughs> Blur is somewhat gone, but the HDMI stopped working. What? When I use the USB cam, the image tears like a sheet of stamps when I move. Tears? 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 Um, blurs? I don't know. What's, I'm not, is that the right word you want it there? I'm not sure. Um, I'm using this as a USB camera, so, so, bleh. maybe your standards are just way too high. This is, um, cleany stuff. Anyhow, I, uh, I do sympathize, Jay. I do hope you do resolve your camera issues and you get those sorted sooner rather than later because we are severely deprived of uh, House of Moth live streams. And I'll be honest, I don't know how much longer we can take it. A screen tear is when you get a horizontal disjoint pathway down. The oh! <laughs> well, I don't get that with this, so I don't know. Maybe I do, and no one tells me. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Uh, you can see a lot of these components are stuck on the side here via this piece of metal. They're all stuck onto this using this metal here as a heat sink. What I'll probably do is I'll put a little bit of um, thermal paste on this for when it attaches to the side of the case so that we'll then transfer that heat onto the case and use the whole case as a heat sink as well. So, um, all right, power supply. Looking good, hey? Yeah. I might get some uh, UV mask on here, and you know what that means, don't you? Pew pew! Pew! Pew pew! Uh, uh, uh. Is Mike... Hello, Mike's Mac Chuck. Hello, Mike. How are you? I hope you are well. Thank you very much for joining the live stream. I do appreciate it. I will, of course, give him a quick shout out. Um, Folks who are not subscribed to Mike from Mike's Mac Chat, check. Please jump across and do so now. He has got some really fun and interesting content. 
don't just take my word for it. Go and find out for yourself. We're not looking at it, are we? I'm not looking at the microscope. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I know there's this blackening here. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, these great big fat traces here. I think it'll be all right. I'm certainly not going to go and scrape all of those clean. That will just take me donkey's ears and I'll probably need to remove some of these components and all that kind of stuff and come on. Uh, very irritated by my uh, iBook G3. So what is Bruce breaking now? Jeez, I said all those nice things. I said all those nice things, and uh, I said them without actually reading that he insulted me with the very first words that he uttered on this live stream. Disgrace. Who do you think you are? Um, yeah, so I'm breaking an LC2 today. Um, this is what, uh, what I've been asked to do. Customer basically came to me and said, can you please break my LC2? I said, yeah, sure. I'm your man. Um... Quality is declining, yes, I know. I knew Jay would say something like that, but that's okay. <clears throat> okay, here's my laser beam. Pew pew, pew pew, pew pew, pew pew, pew pew. Shall I use two? Uh, uh, the other one's a bit of a hassle to set up, sorry. All right. So there's a rather a large area here that I need to uh, cure. I can barely see this. I can actually see it better through the camera than I can with my nude eye. Uh, you know, um, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right. Halion, um, you, it sounds to me like you should probably buy yourself another one and get all the bits. You buy another one for parts. A busted one and use all the bits and pass them along, spread them along. Thank you very much, Jay, for that. Just reminding everyone of the website, Recapper Mac. One thing you will not find on that website is a recapping guide for what I'm recapping right now. And that's because it's a different power supply to the one in the link in the description. So I apologize to folks, but I will rectify that. I have taken a photo of this one, and of course I have been recapping it, so I now know what caps it needs. Um, so when I go back and I'll watch this video again and I'll make a new guide and, and it will bring peace and harmony to the world. Everyone will be able to say, oh no, things are going bad, but then it'll be like, but it's okay, because there's a recapping guide for the Aztec power supply for an LC2. Yay. You can see the way this stuff, no, you can't, because I'm not showing you. It's, it starts off looking very sort of shiny and wet, and then it finishes off, it finishes off looking a little bit more um, sort of uh, matte finish. Thanks for reminding me to recap my EMAC. I hate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got an EMAC. I, I, I didn't really want one, but I have one. Um, I picked up one in a, a lot of free stuff that I picked up recently. Um, I only went to get the free stuff because there was a G4 dual processor, um, 500 megahertz, you know, um, what do you call it? The gray ones. I uh, can't remember what they call them. But there was one there, and I wanted that. But the guy was giving all this stuff away, and I'm sort of like, uh, you know, he didn't know where to give it away. So I said, look, I'll take it all off your hands, and I'll find homes for it. I haven't found homes for it yet. So picked up an EMAC that I didn't particularly want. Had the swivel stand, so that's kind of good. That one works beautifully. Uh, picked up a G3 Snow. I'm going to hang on to that because I don't have any working G3s, G3 iMacs, as much as I hate them because they're so big. I mean, I don't hate them. I like them, but they're so big, they're hard to store. 
I've got a couple of G5 iMacs, uh, which all need recapping, of course. I've got a couple of a uh, couple of iBooks, G4 iBooks. Um, I think that was it. There might be something else. But uh, but anyhow, I mean, I don't know. I might give away the eMac, or I might keep it if I can find somewhere to put it. Um, all right, so I'm feeling pretty good about this now, so I would like to uh, reassemble this, which means I'm going to have to put these wire, attach these wires again. Now, who remembers? Who remembers? Which one is live and which one is neutral? We've got a blue and we've got a brown. Which one is the live? <clears throat> I know, I'm just checking with everyone. In it, in. <laughs> GMAC looks like on belongs on Hoth with Stormtroopers. So does the G3 Snow for that matter. Blue is live, brown is neutral ground. That's almost right, but around the wrong way. If you just think about it, think about it from this point of view, blue is cool and calm and neutral. Cool. Cool and neutral blue. I don't know why they were chosen as this particular color, these colors, brown for live, but it's the way all wires are done here and all of the like AC PowerPoint wires are done here in Australia. They're all done that way. Blue for live, is a brown for live, blue for neutral. Blue troll. Brown is the color of the earth. Hmm, I can understand that. I mean, the thing is that they, they couldn't really use red and black because red and black are commonly known as the colors for dc voltage red for positive black for negative uh for for um for dc uh so when it came to coming with the color scheme for ac we ended up with blue and brown fair enough fair enough okay let's get these wires joined up again shall we i'm gonna get me some solder and oh it fell out you thing you stay ah don't you do it don't you do it well, yeah, I mean, he is doing it, so point to saying that. Again, poking through, melt it and poking through. Hate that, hate that, hate that. Steve! Welcome to the live stream. I don't know what time you call this, but thank you very much for joining. You've been a busy person. We were just talking before about how you are uh, so busy recapping these days because of your, um, well, not only your reputation, but your newfound fame. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. And... There he goes through there. All right. So, oh, I did say I was going to stick some thermal paste on this, didn't I? I don't want to be a liar. All right, thermal paste. This is just the cheap stuff. I'm not using the fancy Arctic silver or anything for this because it's just not necessary. Where's my container of tubes? Here's my container of tubes. Do, 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 do. There's my thermal paste. This stuff is so yuck. I hate it. It's hard to just get it to come out a little bit. It comes out, goes squeeze everywhere. Come on. Come on. Oh, here we go. I managed to get. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, how's your sub count competition going? I'm not sure. Steve was smashing it there for a while. How are we doing now, Steve? Are you, uh, have you got ahead of me yet? 
I mean, I, I, I managed to jump past Steve a while ago, but uh, yeah, he's 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 had this real wave of uh, of popularity going on lately, which of course is wonderful. I'm definitely not going to uh, say anything bad about it. It's eight twenty four p.m. in Central Florida. It is twelve twenty six here p.m. here in Central Sydney. Um. <laughs> You can't outsource work to me. I've got enough. Thank you very much. Uh, my apologies dozed off a bit. Well, I'll try and make it a little bit more interesting in future. So, hey, I'll do a dance in a little while. Um, uh, okay. Boom, 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 boom. Is this my LC2, Bruce? Yes, it is indeed. As I mentioned early on before you were here, I said this is Madeline McAndrews LC2. I also mentioned that I am recapping the power supply when you didn't even ask me to do it. But I figured you would probably be happy for me to do it. Um, and we did find some leakage in there. So probably not a bad idea. But it did confound me a little when I started off because it is... Uh, and uh, Aztec power supply, and I didn't have a recapping guide for it. But thankfully, I did have all the caps I needed, so I was able to recap it all. Um, so there. And uh, whoopsie, come on. Oh, what are you doing? You're vexing me here. In there we, there we go. All right, all right. So I'm going to. Which one is this one? Long one and a short one. I think the. It, should it be the short one there or the long one there? Let's have a look. We'll get the top here. We'll have a look at that. And that there. And then that one there. That should be there. Well, that really doesn't matter. I'll put the short one here. It's not like the screw's going to poke into anything, but I think the short one is meant to go here. Nine twenty six PM in Indiana. Uh, so hang on, it will be yeah, okay, yeah. I'm pretty good with knowing what the Eastern time is, uh, because all of my Mackie Yakin buddies are all Eastern time. Well not all, but I think most of them are. Um, and so and at the moment with you guys having had your time go back and us we're in daylight savings time here, um, uh, it is it's like eight hours. Now it's not actually it's the other way, but the way I do it is I simply add eight hours to whatever time it is now. So it's 12.30, which means it's 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but of course, it's the day before. See, it's Saturday here at the moment. It's Friday over there. So. <sighs> All right, I might. Uh, should I do this one first? I'll do this one. Do on these screws up here, and then we'll test this power supply before we move on to the next stage. Make sure it works. Should I do it all up before I test it? Probably not. See, that's my own confidence and arrogance working against me here. Uh, so, yeah, so we're on day, daylight savings time. They're not on daylight savings time over there. So we basically go through this. So we went through this last year. So when I very first joined the MacGat crew, it was in this particular time slot. Then when we went out of daylight savings, it went, it, you know, sort of, it meant that whatever time it was here, it was then later in the night over there. And then when they went on to daylight savings, uh, it was another hour later. So it all depends on what time I have to get up to be on the MacGat show. So the MacGat show at present, broadcasts at midday our time, Friday. Um, but depending on what time of the year it is, sometimes it's 11 and sometimes it's 10 a.m. So um, I prefer it the way it is now. It gives me a chance to sort of get up and have some brekkie and whatnot. Right, let's get a logic board, shall we? And uh, where did I put it? Does anyone remember where I put the logic board? Uh, no, that's not it. Um, sorry, Madeline, I've lost your logic board. It's gone. Never to be seen again. It really can't have gone far. I haven't got out of this chair. Oh, here it is. I put it in a nice, safe place. Wasn't that good of me? 
Okay, so I'm just going to plug this in. We're going to stick a speaker on there and we're just going to see if it goes bing. Uh, where's the speaker? Here's the speaker. Uh, and that's this one here, I think. That's because that's the fan. And that's the speaker. Uh, incidentally, if you've generally one of the symptoms you get with these LCs, if the things aren't working right, whether it be the power supply or whether it be the problem with the logic board, generally the symptom is if you just put your ear up close to the power supply, you hear a little like a like that. Um, Okay, I've just connected uh, mains power to it, so I'm committed now. Ready? I don't even know if I'm plugged into the right thing for the speaker, so I may not actually be getting anything from it. Uh, it'll help if I connect the fan to it, because then I can actually see if it's doing anything. Um, 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 uh, there we go. like a dead hard drive sound. It's much more subtle. It's sort of, it's a real pop, 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 pop sound. Um, would it be easier for me to, what would it be easier for me to do? Because yeah, yeah. I, I don't have any, uh, I didn't put any VRAM in this, so it may not even start up, because I don't, these things have to have VRAM in them. It's got normal RAM. There's the fan. We can see if it's powering on. And here's the spoiker. Really pulling this one apart, aren't I? Be nothing left. <laughs> ah, this is not the TDK PSU. Uh, the one, in, the guide on my website is the TDK PSU. I'm pretty sure. I don't actually remember which uh, it is, but it's certainly not this one. Okay, let's just leave it like that because there's no real point in putting that all together because I'm going to just pull it apart again. Like a boss. Right, there we go. Let's get that. Let's get this. Let's stick the VRAM in there because I know these guys do get upset if they don't have VRAM in them. Um, we don't want to upset anyone. 512 kilobytes of VRAMage. Okay. Fan spins. No chime though. And that's curious. I don't know if that is related to the power supply or it's related to the board itself. And we do notice, I mean, it did chime before, but the fact that this is spinning means that we are getting power. So let's just check with the old multi meter. Uh, let's go here. And we'll go oh, 5 volts, 12 volts, 5 volts. Power supply is fine. So the problem we're facing now is definitely on the logic board. So that's good because it means that the recapping worked. But it's bad in that this did chime before. So, um, but who knows? Who knows? Ah. Does an LC2 need a double tap on the PSU? I don't think so. Um, but anyhow, look, we're recapping it anyway, so, I mean, you know, let's just recap it. At least we know the power supply works because we are getting the right voltages out of it. So that brings peace and order to the earth. Uh, and let's get my little suckery thing out of the way. This is the thing to stop me from getting the cancer. Uh, that's my fume extractor. You will find links to that in the description now. I didn't used to have uh, a fume extractor link in there before, but I do. I also have a link in there for helping hands, little springy things for holding things when you're soldering them if you need a third hand. Um, so, yeah. Right. Well, who knows why I hate recapping these? There are, I think, 17 reasons why I hate recapping these. Um, caps close to plastic, clusters of caps, lots of caps, caps. 
caps, lots of caps. Um, this is something that I actually just heard uh, Steve saying in one of his streams the other day. I think it might have even been yesterday, saying these are not the ones to practice on if it's your first time recapping. Um, and the reason for that is this little region here. Now, at the very beginning of the stream, for anyone who wasn't actually watching at the time, and actually let me just check and see what the what view count is now. Uh, oh, we are, I'm absolutely right on 50. Hello. I love round numbers. Um, so you can look at this and you can sort of say, oh, well, this board doesn't look too bad. It's, you know, it's fairly clean, it's shiny and all that sort of stuff. But if I can just get the light right on this, uh, which I... I'm hoping I will be able to. Come on. Did it before. Did it before. There we go. You see that? You see this smudge here? That is all leaky capacitor gunge. There you go. So that is a very, very clear indication. 48 watching now. Okay, fair enough. Two people left when I said 50. Actually, the, the, the truth is that the... Uh, YouTube console thing that you watch your live streams with, uh, it's it, it's been having a few accuracy <laughs> issues of late. Um, so uh, so yeah, very very clear indication this one needs to be recapped. I mean, it looks darn ugly. Um, so uh, yeah, Mac mucus. That's what that's what it is. Um, so this is why it needs to be done. And is that the sound chip in the middle of it all near the? Yes, that is correct. That is, there is the sound chip right there. Um, so we've got to obviously rid this board of these capacitors, this plague of capacitors here, and replace them. Um, worth noting, uh, this is something that I discovered um, just the other day. Um, these little ones here, the little ones is 10 microfarad, 16 volt, and uh, 1 microfarad, 50 volt. Can't get these in polymers. They don't make this physical size and those capacitor ratings. They just don't seem to make them. So when it comes to recapping these, if uh, you know, we're wanting to go down the path of polymers, you can't do it. Um, but what I have done, because uh, the reason why I mentioned that is because one of my customers actually asked to have um, electrolytic caps on there. And I said, well, look, we're probably better off going with polymers if we're going to do that. Uh, but what I have been able to do, I've been able to get uh, really good quality, long lifespan electrolytics to replace these little guys. So it's all going to look beautiful. It's going to look pretty. Um, but yeah, sorry, but it's not with this one. This one we're just going to do with good old fashioned tantalums. And uh, that'll be a wonderful joy. So we're going to have to set up our, ourselves with lots of little, uh, lots of little, um, what do you call them things? Heat shields and stuff like that. And Captain, T I mean, look at it. Look at it. Look at look look at look at look at it look at that huh yeah. huh yeah. yeah I mean not like there was any doubt but yeah just bringing it home that there is the uh, CPU sixteen megahertz six eight zero three zero some might say there that it's terribly underpowered and they'd be right um okay so. I like to protect the stickers, I like to protect the barcodes, because that's just me, I just like to do it, well it's not me actually, I couldn't give a stuff about the barcodes, but I do care about my customers' computers. So, I'm going to get a little bit of uh, Captain Tape, one of the big problems I have with this, I might get some foil on there first, foil, foiled again, ah. some aluminium foil, for people who like to hear me chuck that extra syllable into uh, aluminum. Some aluminium foil. Let's just uh, get a little bit here. I just want to protect this uh, this serial number. I just uh, I just do. So what I might do is I'll, I'll get this tape and I, I, this stuff's getting blown away by the fan so it's all getting a little bit annoying and tedious. Anyone who refers to this stuff as tinfoil, it's actually incorrect. Um, there was a period of time when it was made out of tin, but it's not anymore. It is made out of alum aluminium or aluminium, but it has retained the nickname of tinfoil, uh, but it is not tinfoil. So there. 
a little bit of trivia for you. Probably already knew that, but never mind. What? Uh, scunge. Needs an E on the end of that, Michael. <laughs> Um, traces don't look too bad. Yeah, so you're exactly right. The traces don't look too bad. This will probably be okay with just a recap and a bit of a clean. Um, I don't think we'll have to revert to any trace repair, but we will see. I mean, sometimes they surprise you and you think you're all doing great, and then all of a sudden you find some horrendousness. But let's start getting some caps off this. Mm -hmm. Nope, that didn't work. So I'm using my little heat shields here, which... Um, I haven't said in a while what I use. Um, I generally do say it quite a bit, but I, uh, if you've got a blade like this, this sort of clickety clickety blade, there's a snap off blades that you can get. I use those as heat shields. I snap the ends off and get them different lengths. And then I use little springs to hold them in position. So let's see if I can get this off without destroying the, uh, the serial number, shall we? I'm gonna blow from this side and I don't wanna wreck the new bus slot either. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going with enough. Blowage there, there we go, that's better. I don't care what happens to the plastic on these caps, it's just the plastic of everything else around it. There it goes one. Okay, those are the two difficult ones, they're off, so that's great. Now, um, oh god, that stinks. Oh man, that reeks. <laughs> Um, sealed and solder balls that get formed. Uh, I've mentioned this before. I have the issue with these solder balls. What happens is the old solder gets a coating on the outside. When you apply hot air to it, uh, the coating on the top doesn't melt, but the solder underneath it does. It starts pushing through little cracks in that, uh, in that coating on the outside, just that crust on the outside, and then you get these little solder balls floating around. So if you are using a hot air station, do be aware of that. Do be careful. You need to give it a good clean afterwards. Make sure you don't have little solder balls all floating around. And uh, and maybe a bit of an inspection as well. Sometimes these solder balls can get wedged in between pins on ones like this. A little wedge of a solder ball in there. Can happen. I've seen it happen. Um, so just be cautious. Okay, I need a larger... There we go, there's one. So let's just see if we can get a few of these off in one go. I'm going to try and get a whole bunch off. I'm going to only get this one, 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 this one. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. 42 microfarad, 16 volt. The most common size of uh, capacitor, service mount capacitor, on the old Macintosh computers. So if you're planning to do some recapping, you want to have plenty of these installed. Um, However, on these LC models, this is the most common one. 10 microfarad, 16. The board is absolutely full of them. So if you're planning to do a lot of LCs, make sure you have a whole stack of them. When it comes to the one that you need the least of, we'll get to that. When we see it, we'll get to it. She comes. Oh, pop. You got a pop. Yeah. Fightened. You're so fightened. Um... Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Okay, we got a lot off there, and that was good. That, that was very productive. Okay. Ooh, fell down. Okay. I feel like that's not flush, because it's not. Goodbye. These are coming off really easily. It's my lucky day. Okay. Sorry about the white balance on here. Things are appearing in really weird colors because my microscope camera has sort of defaulted. It's reverted back to its default setting for no apparent reason. Uh, of where it, um, it it constantly adjusts white balance rather than what I normally do is just do the white balance when it switches on and then it just, it just stays the same white balance for the whole time. Um, who can I blame? I need to blame someone for that. Um, okay. 
And here we've got the ugly, these capacitors we do not like because they are right near plastic. Um, I said it the way it sounds. Okay, fair enough. Images you can smell. Center of the scope. No. Solid balls from hell. I uh, love the ones that pop and let out the flavor strip. <laughs> flavor strip. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, hello. Uh, nice to see you again. Welcome to the stream, Andrew. Um, I think I was chatting with you just the other day, wasn't I? About something I can't remember in the email. I forget. Um, blame Jay. Yeah, fair enough. He's not here at the moment, is he? Is Jay still here? He's been quiet for a while. I'm sure he'll pipe up when we start blaming him for things. Maybe he's trying to fix that 3400. Here's this guy that says he's never going to fix old stuff again, and then he takes on a 3400. Heart of gold, that Jay. Heart of gold. Right, I'm using foil for this just because uh, it's here. Um, I generally use those little heat shields that I show, uh, but because I, I, I forgot how good foil is for doing some forms of, uh, you know, heat shield protection because it's so malleable. You can just get it like this. I'm going to sort of shape it what I, how I want. Excellent. Like curl. Come on, get in there. Thank you. Right. Oh dear. Oh dear, dear, dear. What's going on there? Okay. This is the last three caps I need to, I need to take off. Get out of it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Such a stark contrast. Um, today, I, uh, compared to last week, I was... Uh, oh, we have got a little bit of meltage there, but... Ow! You're only going to see that if you're looking at it under a microscope. So, everyone can feel comfortable and safe and get on with their lives without fear of melting. Um, yes, so this time last week, I was having a very, very fancy lunch. Yeah. Okay. Stay. You. If I use a bit of foil to make it stay. How about that? How about that? See if that does it. Whee. That's all the caps off. Whoopsie. Uh, talking about the colour classic that is fixed and running like new. Awesome. Yes, we were talking about that. Love hearing stories like that. Love hearing hearing so that's right, you um look at the little critter. Look at the little critter. Um you were talking about the math coprocessor. That's what we were talking about. Very, very interesting. Um that you had the math co-presses that was uh, making your computer not work, I think, from memory. Um, well done, Jacob. That is, uh, that is a good thing. So, uh, yes, uh, I think we can all uh, attest to uh, situations where repasting um, a Mac has made a big difference to its operational temperature. I plan to do it to this Mac here soon, but everyone tells me it's a nightmare of a job, so I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Um, now we're going to the cleaning stage. We should all be familiar with this if we've watched this before. If you haven't watched my streams before, what I do is I basically get some flux and I get some solder and I get some heat from my soldering iron. I do some gentle rubbing here. I never stay in one position for very long. I'm just moving, 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 always keeping moving, 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 moving. And very, very, very gentle. And slowly, all that black gunge comes off and we just end up with these lovely, Shiny bits of solder on here. See how nice they look? They look so nice. Then I remove that solder with some wick at the same time, giving a little bit of a rub. 
Uh, I don't go too hardcore on the wick. You, wick is something that you need to practice with. Don't practice on your um, favorite Mac. Practice on something you don't care about, like a PC uh, or a, an old VCR or something like that. Um, so here's the thing. Um, it's very easy to tear pads if you're not used to working with wick because if you happen to let it dry on the pad like that and then you give it a yank, you're going to take that pad with it. So you just got to get used to it. But as you can see, what we have there now are two absolutely shiny, sparkly, clean pads, all ready for new components and new solder. Um, when they are like that, they accept solder really well, which means you'll get lovely, nice, shiny joints. Now, if you're wondering about this little black bit at the uh, end here, oh, geez, it's windy. Just uh, got all windy there all of a sudden. Um, that's just a little dip here. Um, that is where the trace meets the, uh, the pad. And there's a little dip there because you can see that there's, um, what do you call that stuff? Um, there's UV mask or outs around the outside. So there's all UV mask here, but there's no UV mask here. You can see that little stepping off point. So it creates a little step here and that little step creates this little black line. Now, it's a common failure point for some of these when that, where that little black line is for you to uh, end up getting trace breaks if the computer's in bad condition. But to be honest, this one's really not that bad, so I've got no real concerns there. I think it's going to be fine. So we're all ready to stick a new cap on that one. Let's keep it moving. I'm trying to keep this moving at a reasonable pace because I do get a little bit dragged down with this sometimes, and I don't want to do that. Uh, and always keep in mind, anyone who is actually watching the live stream, if you ever have any questions, you please jump on there and ask them. Head it off. Okay, Lane Brown, thank you very much for joining. I do appreciate it. And, um, oh, you're most welcome for whatever I do for the community, whatever it happens to be. I am happy to do it and keep doing it. And I hope the community doesn't mind. Um, and we are going to... Keep a soldering and the soldering. We're just going to keep rubbing until see. I mean, you can see. I mean, you can see perfectly well here that the solder's not sticking to where that black stuff is. So it's got to be gone. We've got to get rid of it. We want these. We want solder to stick. That's what we need solder to do. There's a nasty looking trace there. Can you see it? Can you see it? I can see it. We're going to have a look at that trace after we're finished here. Uh. Do I have a guide for an LC3? I'm pretty sure I do. Jump onto recappermac.com.au. I might even have a live video of doing one. Uh, I have done them. I'm pretty sure I've got all of the LC family there. LC1, 2, 3, and 4, 7, 5. The LC3, I think it was a little bit late because I, I didn't have any good photos, but I got one recently and I was able to photograph it. Let's just have a quick little look here on the old recappermacca. So recap, mac.com.au, resources, menu, LC, LC2, <gasps> there's no LC3, <sighs> oh my goodness, okay, let me see if I can rectify that, let me see, that's, oh no, mood, all right, um, I'll have to check. Um, I'm pretty sure I took some photos of an LC3 recently, some good quality photos of an LC3 recently. And so uh, I should be able to just get a guide up on the website. So, oh man, I am so embarrassed. So embarrassed. Okay, we're good. This keeps getting hooked over my keyboard here. It's really annoying me. Stupid. Um, check the iMessage chat. You jinx me with the pads traces. All right, let's have a look. What do we got? Oh, okay. So what are you working on there, uh, Steve? Wow. Okay. Okay. I, I, they still look like they're joined though. Steve just sent me a picture. He has. If I knew more about how OBS works, I could probably show it to you, but... You know, I don't. I mean, I probably could figure it out, but you know. All right, so the trace that I was mentioning before is here. As you can see, we've got some blackening. 
Um, I don't think it's broken, but we st still need to deal with it. We can't be leaving traces looking like that. Um, just won't do. Just put your phone on camera. All right. All right. I mean, I do actually, I think I do know how to do it. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can figure it out. I'll try not to show any, any inappropriate photos here, but let's see if I can figure this out. There. And then let me just go here to, oh, I need to do, um, I need to do that. Uh, how do I do the split thing? Where we go. View. Uh, because there's a way that you can actually just, uh, no, I'm not going to do it. All right. I'm going to show, show you on my phone. Someone just gave me some money. Uh, like a donation by the looks of it, I think. Nice. Thank you. Uh, messages, messages, messages. Where are they? Oh, there they are. It's the first one there. I wonder why I didn't see that. Um, okay. Here we go. Let's see how well this goes. Being viewed. I'm just going to change over to this view. And I'm going to go like that. Is that all right? I know it's a bit out of focus. That's because I have this set on a set focus rather than autofocus. And you can see that trace there is uh, has a bit of a bend in it, a bit of a curve. I mean, it looks like it is still joined, so it's probably just going to be a matter of uh, getting a bit of, uh, you know, cleaning it up without wrecking it and then getting a bit of uh, UV mask on it. But it's definitely not meant to look like that. Is that an A40 AV? No. Uh, no, hang on. Uh, it's a classic two. Okay. It's, it's a classic two. Okay. Um, all right, so you're all good. Um, cat was absolutely rotted under it. Yeah, it happens. It happens. All right, there's the old microscope. Let's get some scrapage going on here. We want to see what's under this. I might need to this. Um, uh, what do you call this stuff? Fluxes now. I've been sitting here long enough to get all hard, so I'm gonna have to clean it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Look at that. That that looks really nasty, actually. Sorry about the birds. They're making a lot of noise. It is it's springtime. Yes, yeah, springtime. I've lost my scaffold. Here it is. Yes, it is springtime. It's very nice. Yeah, look how bad that is. I'm telling you, given a bit of time. And that, I'm pretty sure, is still making a connection. But given some time, that was well on its way to getting busted through. Um, let's get some uh, solder on it, and then we'll just see if we can figure out whether it needs uh, a little bit more than just solder. Oh, I think that's enough. Uh, it looks pretty good. That uh, looks pretty good. I'm fine with that. But I am going to mask it, of course, before I put the uh, cap on. Uh. I've got to get the board clean before putting mask on. I obviously use uh, Q-tips when I'm wanting to clean in certain areas, but when I'm doing this bit, I tend to use tissues. I just find they help me get more gunk off. Or sponge, as we uh, often refer to it on this channel. The special Bruce Rain, uh, Breakers Creations, glossary of terms. Uh, gunge. Dry mess on your board. Sponge, wet mess on your board. Punge, gaseous mess coming off the board. Test the trace. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. I'll test the trace. Where does he go? He goes there. You can't see that. It's off camera. To there. Beep. Beep. Yeah. Um, 
<sighs> Lisa at Coel's. Vic, they've got plenty of them around at the moment, I tell you. They were going like crazy this morning, I'll tell you. The Coels. Anyone who's not familiar with Coel, obviously Dana will be, because uh, she is from this country. She's from Bathurst, which is west of here. But, um, uh, yes, the uh, Coels are a bird that fly down here in the springtime from north, and they lay their eggs in other birds' nests because they're a cuckoo. They are a cuckoo bird type of bird and they um, um, and then they wait for um, <laughs> a different species of bird to raise their young and then they come back and take them back again when the weather starts to get cooler so that's uh, that's what they do and they have red eyes so they look a bit spooky um, the other one we get here is the channel bill cuckoo they're gigantic they're huge Great big bird, the massive beak. Beautiful birds. Once again, they also have red eyes and they are also obviously a cuckoo. There we go, a little uh, bird lesson for everyone today. Australian birds. I do get quite a lot of birds here because of the tree that I have in the backyard. Um, eh, eh, eh. Uh, but I'll be honest, uh, because we do have the tree in the backyard and we do have the birds and the bats and all that sort of stuff, I just, I don't hear them anymore. I just, I don't, just, I just don't even notice them. Um, I remember when, um, uh, a few years ago, when someone moved in next door to my house, they, they were just renting the property and they just, they moved in next door. And after I think like the first or second night of them being here, they hadn't been here long at all. And they arrived just in the time when the, uh, our fig tree was in fruit. And they just came around and knocked on the door and said, how often are the bats in the trees? <laughs> because they're so noisy. But so I just don't, I tend not to notice them anymore. I said, oh, whenever there's fruit on the tree. <laughs> as soon as the fruit's gone, they'll be gone. I think, oh, okay, good. Seemed a kind of weird way to come and introduce yourself to the neighbours, but you know, they were pretty weird people. Mm -hmm. I need to get myself some UV, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, sunglasses to. I mean, I think there is some UV protection on these, I can't remember, but I think there is some. But I really should get myself some proper UV protection lenses because there is UV coming off, the, off this. All right. Okay. Well, that's that's one ugly looking trace, but just the one, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, let's have a look at this little cluster. This is going to be fun. So we've got a lot of cleaning to do here. Uh, precisely, fourteen of them. Um, so let's get some flux on here and let's turn this into a, a bit of a production line. Beer, 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 beer. I've got so much flux now. I'm so happy. I was for a long time. I was just I was just trying to make the last bit of flux last as long as possible because um, the flux I was um, trying to get from overseas got lost. But now I got a double delivery. That reminds me, I've got to pay for the second one. I said to, said to the guys, I will pay for the second one, and they didn't say, Oh no, don't worry about it. They said, Oh, thank you. So I've got to, I've got to do that. <laughs> Don't forget the fan spin. Yes, there is a there is um, a kind of an issue with a lot of these with the fan spin, and that is that a lot of these old Macs will fan spin uh, even when nothing else works. So, uh, so fan spin is not a particularly good gauge for working on these. These are a bit grubby. Uh, just working our way around. As you see, I just keep rubbing these until the solder hangs on. 
until the whole, whole solder sticks onto the whole pad and then I move on to the next one and then of course I'm going to come back and I'm going to uh, clean these up with final clean with the solder wick and then what we'll do is we're going to assess what these all look like and whether we need to go and put any UV mask to protect any traces we don't want to create any accidental shorts uh, and by shorts I mean short circuits I don't mean pants um, Generally, when someone refers to a short, they are talking about a short circuit. And the term short basically just means that the circuit is not going the distance that it is meant to go. Rather than going from, I don't know, A to Z, it's stopping at G. Oh, why would I say it? That one? A to C. Rather than going from A to C, it's making contact at B, where it's not meant to be. So it's short. So the circuit is short, not as long as it's meant to be. All right, these are all looking great. I've used a lot of solar, but they're looking great. And I've got my, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, fume extractor miles away from where I'm working, because that's just how I do things, man. I am still getting used to this fume extractor, so do as I say, don't do as I do. And all that. Australia, how's it going? All right. We've got a few strains in the audience here today. G'day, how's it going? All right. Yeah, good. Thanks. Good. Thanks. Crikey. Stone the flaming crows. Ooh, anyone see that pad move? I did. Frightening. Ah, oh, this is running out. This one's running out. NK Morpheus, hello. Uh, Isaiah Boshaw. Huntsman behind you, mate. So I actually quite like uh, Huntsman. Yeah, cute little spider. I mean, they're not little. They're not really cute, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 a bit of a, a bit of a huntsman fan. They are so impressive in terms of like the places they can fit, because they tend to hunt. They don't, they don't use webs. They tend to hunt in like cracks and things like. So they hide in little crevices, like uh, under bits of bark or in cracks of rocks and stuff like that. And so they're really good at finding little tiny gaps to fit in. And even though they're an absolutely massive spider, I mean, they're huge. They can get huge. They fit in the tiniest little gaps. And of course, the one I was telling some of my friends about recently, one of the ones that really gets you is they can actually fit through things like the uh, vents, air vents on cars. So they can actually get into cars even when they're closed. And, um, and they have a tendency to sit underneath the... Uh, the sun visor. So, you know, in those American movies, how every person seems to keep their keys on top of the visor. Well, that's where the huntsmen sit. Um, and so when you, you have a sunny day or something like that, and you go to pull your visor down, and this huntsman sort of climbs out. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's happened to me. I mean, I'm not just saying that as some sort of anecdotal thing. That has absolutely happened to me. Um, and of course, they're just like, hey, man, what are you disturbing me for? And they hop down and they try and run away. You know, they're, they're basically just trying to get away. But they run across your legs while you're driving and stuff like that. That, that always makes things interesting. But they're a nice little spider. Yes, they are. And they do good things for the environment. Blob, blob, miss this one. Blob. Yes, this is very true. Um, the, the huntsman will just hang out on the wall sometimes. Um, I had there was a little tiny one uh, down in my backyard once, and I took a photo of it. And I just sort of sent the photo to. Uh, um to to some of my us friends and just said oh this is he, he you know this is the best one i could find but this is a photo of a little huntsman and of course the response came back little 
Because, I mean, a, a huntsman, you know, particularly like a female one, you know, when they're really big, they, they're, they're the size of a palm of your hand quite easily. Uh, from like, you know, sort of from leg to leg. Obviously, the abdomens are smaller. But in terms of the size of the spider, they quite happily get to the size of a human hand. Um, but as I say, they're pretty harmless. I mean, they can bite, uh, but they generally don't. Uh, I mean, unless you are really trying to get them to bite. I mean, people, that is. They bite other things all the time. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, it's generally my job around the house to remove any sp unwanted spiders from the... Uh, from the indoor, um, but I don't mind doing it. Oh. Yeah, I mean, huntsmen's are probably about the biggest spider that we have, I, I would think. Um, there, there are some very deadly ones, but the deadly ones are actually quite small. Um, well, when I say small, I mean compared to a huntsman, they're still quite big. Funnel web's a big spider, don't get me wrong. But small in comparison to a huntsman. And the mouse-eating spider. There's also the mouse-eating spider. Often gets confused. People think the mouse-eating spider is the funnel web. They do have quite... They're, they're different, though. They have very identifiable differences. How did this become the spider channel? That's my fault. Sorry. Okay. Well, I missed one. Call off the search. Here it is. I'm good at missing these, aren't I? Because I'm not using a guide right now. I will when I put the new caps on, though. Make sure I get them in all the right place in that. Yes, I've seen, I've obviously seen the uh, tarantulas and stuff like that. Um, I mean, come on, who can forget the tarantula scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark, eh? Hey? Hey? I think they were from South America, those tarantulas, weren't they? I think, I think, from memory. Uh mm, 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 mm. Okay. Um Right, well I think it's time for us to stick some caps on. Um Oh I'll tell you what I will do while I'm here, because I'm going to be doing this. I'm gonna suck out some solder out of these holes because I am going to be putting a um, uh, a socket on this. Now this is going to go through lots and lots and lots of solder wick. Now, the reason why I do this, the reason why I put an FPU, as I said at the beginning of this live stream, is not necessarily because it's going to provide huge amounts of additional performance. Yes, it is going to help with floating point calculations. There's no doubt about that. How many times does a computer need to use those? Oh, I don't really know. 
Um, but I just have this whole thing about this computer having the means to have an FPU attached. And in this day and age where you can basically buy an FPU for so cheap, just make sure you don't get a fake one. Well, I bought some just the other day and I haven't opened up the package yet, so we'll inspect and see whether they're fake or not. These ones that I'm not getting, I'm not too concerned about. I'll basically come back at them probably from the other side. Maybe need to add a little bit of extra solar. But we just get as many as we can to start off with and then we'll go back and get the ones that haven't haven't gone through. And then we'll lament how much wick we've ended up using doing this. Uh, all right. How are we doing? Well, um, I have finished cleaning all the pads. I'm ready to stick new caps on, but I thought while I was at it here, I would suck some solder out of these holes so that we can get ready for a socket to go on here. Probably need a little bit of uh, flux around here because it's all getting a little bit dry and gross. Uh, I apologise if I'm not catching up on the chat at the moment because this is real, you know, I just can't really chat while I'm doing this. Well, that's a lot of wick I just used. And there's one packet going. So let's move on to the next packet, shall we? Shall we? Well, this one's nearly empty as well. well. May as well finish this one. Definitely getting into a bit of a flow here. I know I don't get all of them. I get most of them. Someone's making a bit of a racket next door. It's all going about. Oh, that's getting hot in the old fingers. Actually, warmer. <clears throat> no, Bruce and Ada, not for this job, no. I've basically found that the wick works better. Um, I have tried both messes. I've even tried the uh, the mechanical sucker, but I just find this, even though it is an, a huge amount of wick that gets used, I have just found this method to work the bestest. Just, just, just. Love watching the wick turn silver. It's very satisfying when it does because you know that it's sucking up all that solar, particularly when it happens like really quickly because you know it's just gone big just like that. You know, it just catches it all in one go. Whoa. Whee. And of course, the thing is that I then use that to help get the next one because solder likes solder. Solder likes to hang out with other solder. So if I get onto the wick with a bit of silver already there, it tends to help the other stuff come out. Come on, man. Damn, I got some of the plastic from the uh, from the wick container. Please. A lot of repetition here, you know, if I was doing this as a pre-recorded video, I'd be fast-forwarding around about now. Um, so I do apologise, uh, you won't have to just sort of entertain yourselves. Uh, uh, let's talk about the sort of day you've had. Uh, you can talk about the sort of Mac that you really wish you had that you don't have. We do talk about that a fair bit on this channel. We talk about the ones, the either the ones that got away or the ones that you want and you haven't been able to find. I always find that's a, 
a good conversation starter because uh, everyone has their sort of dream vintage Mac. Well, not everyone. If you don't like Macs, you don't. But if you like your vintage Macs, everyone has the one they want. You know, for me, it's probably I'd love a Quadra 800 and I'd love a uh, uh, an F2 FX. Oh, Jesus, pulled that out a bit too far. And a PowerPC 2SI. <laughs> Is that one you got to make up for us, Dana? For those that aren't familiar with uh, Dana Siberia's work, yeah, you do need to check it out. Uh, she puts together these absolutely fantastic... Well, should I say fictional? That's a little bit insulting, isn't it? Uh, she puts together these prototypes... And she's also, uh, I think, a uh, Doctor Who fan, so. Can't be anything bad about a Doctor Who fan. Right, so let's just have a look here. I feel like there's a couple where we're not actually all the way through, even though we look like we might be. Uh, once I clean a little bit, we'll... Will reveal, uh, will reveal a com distinct lack of focus. Okay, where are we here? Um, got my first color classic this week. Excellent. Hope you didn't pay too much for it, uh, uh, NK. Um, the uh, I've been seeing rather silly things going on with uh, color classic pricing lately. Uh, Quad 800, what did you like about them? Uh, it is purely nostalgia. I, uh, I worked for a company um, and we got this wave of, um, you know, sort of, uh, we'd been using 030s for years and years and years. And then we got a whole bunch of 040s. We got Quad 700s, we got 900s, we got 800s, all that. And I just remember them uh, so well. Um, you know the you know the 840 of course is the one that everyone goes for and i'd love an 840 as well but the 800 has more of a nostalgic feel for me it's as simple as that I mean, it's, you know um it's not like i think they were necessarily the, that good a computer or anything like that but they're just very nostalgic for me so i think it might be time for new gloves because these ones are looking all yuck 199.99 plus 79 shipping but that's not too bad you know um that's really not too bad. Two hundred bucks for a color classic. What state's it in? Does it work? Does it need recapping? I mean, you know, and that. <laughs> yeah, um, I could just see there's chat going on here at the moment about uh, Dana's. Uh, Dana's artwork and the fact that sometimes this stuff gets posted and people actually believe they're real things, which is fantastic. I think I think that obviously is uh, that must be an extremely rewarding feeling to have that uh, have people looking at these things and thinking they're real. Uh, sitting on forty seven viewers at the moment by my count here, people might see it differently because, as I said before, the numbers are, are uh, uh, a bit weird on the old uh, on the old uh, U deal. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, uh, if you are sitting there in the background quietly watching and being anonymous, don't be afraid to jump on and say hello in the chat. What's my favourite classic Mac? That's a really hard one to actually pinpoint because I have several favourite classic Macs. Probably classify them into different groups. If we're talking about the compact Macs, um, it's the Mac Plus and the SE30. Uh, the Mac Plus for me, because it was one of the first ones I ever used, and, and that was an experience in itself. That was, you know, using a Macintosh for the first time, um, you know, when up until that point, all, I, all I'd used were kind of text-based ones, you know, whether it be MS-DOS or whether it be an Apple IIe or a microB computer that we had out here or 
my first computer was a VZ200, to suddenly go to this graphic interface with this incredibly high resolution white background, you know, it was black on white like paper. Whereas every computer I'd used before was black background with a green or an amber or something like that. So this was a completely different visual experience using a Mac. And that very, very fine resolution, 72 dots per inch, um, drawing in Mac Paint and stuff like that. So I was doing that on a Mac Plus. So there's a huge amount of nostalgia associated with that. So that the Mac Plus has a huge place. Then, of course, the SE30, because what an amazing computer that was. 68030 computer with expandable to 128 megabytes of RAM. Fantastic, you know, really, you know, that is the, uh, you know, I've, I've got an Ethernet card in mine, and, and that's the um, the ultimate compact, in my, in my opinion. Um, and uh, so there's my favorites of those ones. And then if we start looking at the Mac 2 range, I have a huge fondness for the Macintosh 2 CI. I make no uh, apologies for that. I really love it. And of course, I love the Mac 2 as well, uh, and the 2FX. I don't have a favorite. I just love all of them. Uh, first Mac was the SE30, or some first Mac was a 512K. Uh, I've actually got a 512K up there. I've got a 512KE. Started its life as a 512K, got upgraded to a 512KE. Um, and uh, that's one of my prized possessions. It's the oldest Mac I own. Um, I don't have a 128K. I'm, if I get one one day, that'd be nice. But my first Mac was a Big Mac. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! It's special sauce. Uh, family's first Mac with a 2CX. Yes. And are you, you've still got that one, haven't you, Steve? I think you do actually have the original 2CX. Is that, would I be correct in saying that? Or have you just got another one? You actually have the actual, actual computer, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And that is awesome. That is so good to, uh, to still hang on to it. Steve hangs on to things, not like me, who gave a lot of my stuff away. And then I had to go in and get a lot of this stuff again. Let's get some caps on this thing, shall we? I went down here to grab my um, recapping guide and I got distracted, so sorry about that. Uh, LC475, no. It's not one of those. LC2, there we go. LC2. Um, oh, I need to fix this guide up. It's really hard to read. Okay. I'm going to start off. We've got one, one microfarad, 50 volt. 5 47 16s, 1 100 6.3, and 10 10 microfarad 16. I'm going to start with the 1 microfarad 50 volt, which lives up here in the corner. So, this is one of the capacitors that you can't seem to buy as a polymer in this size. So, you know, you have to either put an electrolytic or you have to put a tantalum in there, uh, which is a shame. So I was thinking to myself, oh, one day I'm just going to move to all polymers. Nah, nah, can't, nah. -uh. Right, now, um, where have I put all my capacitors, you reckon? It can't be too far away. Um, uh, I'll bet you they're underneath this. They are too. What a dumb blade for them. Stupid. Sorry, I'm overdoing it, aren't I? Too much stupid going on. Stupid. All right. <clears throat> One microfarad, 50 volt. If you are buying capacitors for recapping, if you're planning to do like several, more than one, a few, uh, the one microfarad, 50 volt doesn't appear on that many of the Macs. And on the ones that does appear on, there's usually only one of them there. So you don't need to buy huge stocks of the one microfarad 50 volt. Um, you know, I've probably got, I don't know, maybe a dozen here. I'm not even going to worry about ordering more for a while yet. Probably when I get down to about, I don't know, six left or something like that, I'll probably order some more. Because, uh, yeah, just don't need that many. Okay. So we've got the stripe on the plus side with uh, tantalum capacitors as opposed to the stripe on the negative side with ele electrolytics oh excuse me uh 105 is the number you see on this capacitor and that tells you that it's one zero followed by five zeros so it's essentially one with six zeros after it uh, which gives you one million picofarads which is equal to one microfarad so there you go. And then, of course, the voltage is written underneath it. 
five zero. Too easy. Let's get this capacitor on the board. And when I'm doing this, I try and get the heat of the soldering iron right into that corner there to make sure that I'm heating not only the pad, but heating the pin as well. So I want both the things that I'm trying to get solder onto to be nice and hot. Then the solder will just then happily flow to it. Now how do I do this without melting that barcode sticker? Hmm? I need my foil back. Foiled again. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do it. No. Let's try the captain tape. The big problem I have, RJ Peterson, greetings to you too. Uh, the big problem I have here is that often when you get a bit of flux onto the barcode uh, and then you put tape on it, you lift the barcode off with the tape, and I don't want to do that. And it seems like I'm going to a lot of lengths for the barcode, but. There's a bit too much solder on it, but you know, that'd be nice. Okay, there we go. Do the wiggle test. Steve has come to call it the wiggle test. I like the wiggle test. I like that term. Stealing that one from Steve. So I'll just give it a nudge from both sides. Make sure that it's fixed on both sides. Classic 2 works, yay! Awesome, that is good to hear. We always love it when things work. It's very rewarding when you're doing this stuff, particularly when you get on a bit of a run. I, I And, and it, it works in reverse as well. Sometimes when I come down here to work and you just end up working on computer after computer that doesn't work after you've recapped it or you know, trying to repair it and you're having problems. And it just it wears down on you, you know? Um, I'm just going to do this cap here only because um, I just want to get rid of this tape. Um, so this is a 10 microfarad 16 volt. And positive is facing to the left there. You can see the little plus screen printed on the board. Okay, so Stevie, you're getting through all of your recapping backlog. I'm sure not. I've actually got uh, a bit of a social thing tomorrow, which means I won't be able to do much recapping tomorrow. So uh, I'm afraid some of the things that I've got here at the moment are just going to have to sit for a bit. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's try and do this without losing a barcode. Oh, the barcode still looks pretty good. Slight, slight meltage just there, but I'll tell you what, it's not bad. Um, okay, so this is 106, so that's 10 followed by six zeros, or one with seven zeros after it, which is 10, or uh, 10 million picofarads or 10 microfarads. Yeah. Uh, how did the PSU work out? Well, it's it's working when we went and plugged it into here we couldn't get this to chime but at the end of the day i went and checked all the voltages and they were all good so the power supply is working so we're basically just thinking that this particular uh logic board is now not happy because it's just got all this leakage on it so i'm recapping this and then we'll do another little test and then if the test works out then we're going to stick an fpu on it pu an fpu um Right, 100 microfarad 6.3, let's get that little chappy on. There's only one of those on this board. 100 microfarad 6.3, 100. 100. Uh, that's going here. Yeah, that lives in between these two ports just there, which you can't see because you can't see. And that's there. Um, once again, another one of the little tips from Bruce, you may have heard it before, the little tips from Bruce here is to, if you're soldering something, 
always solve the difficult solder the difficult side first leave the easy side for afterwards so uh, just looking here I just want to check a couple of things higher good 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 yeah okay cool so obviously this one here is crammed down next to this um, headphone socket or whatever it is so I'm going to do the easy side over here first I want to try and leave plenty of space to get in and around the other side so I'm going to solder like this like that and then I've got this little gap here now I can't get in there with this but I'm going to swap over to a different tip and that tip will allow me to get in there now, this is one of the great things about T12 tips this thing is blazingly hot, but it's only blazingly hot from here up. So I can hold this from the bottom while I swap. So anyone who's looking for a budget soldering iron, get one with T12 tips. There's a, a link in the description for where there's a budget one. It's only like 40 something US dollars. I mean, come on. So. Uh, also, someone uh, mentions what uh, hot air station you have. Yes, that's exactly right. As uh, as Dana mentioned there, all of my videos do have a very good description of all of the things I use, but there are also budget alternatives in there. So you might see what I use, but then I also put a link for something like, if you're, okay, if you're wanting to start out, you don't want to spend too much money, here's a budget alternative that'll keep you going in the meantime. You know, Decide whether it's something you want to keep doing as well. Um, I mean, I started off with budget equipment because I didn't know how long I was going to keep doing this for. I thought it might just be a, a phase. Maybe it still is a phase. Um, maybe one day I'll just wake up and go, nah, no more recapping. Can't see it happening though. I just get too much joy from getting these things working again. Um, all right, so there's that one there. Now let's stick the 47s on, which we of which we have five. So I'm going to get five out. I'm taking a bit of a risk getting five out at once. So I've mentioned to people before, I have capacitor fairies in the place. If I take too many capacitors out at once, when I turn my head away, the ca capacitor fairies come and steal them from me. So that's why I generally only get a few out at a time. I just don't want to tempt those capacitor fairies. All right, I'm going to do these three along here. One here. One here. And one. Oh. Oh, those klepto capacitor fairies. Oh, I'm just going to plop these in position. Are you going to throw this board in the cleaner before you do any trace repair? I don't think it needs any trace repair. Um, but, um, yeah, I, the traces all seem alright. I mean, I haven't had a super good look. I'll have a look there, but... Uh, there's a little bit of scunge there. Might clean that up. But no, uh, the short answer is no. I'm not going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Because I'm... Uh, uh, terribly impatient. Um, let's just get a little bit of cleaning there, and let's get a little bit of cleaning there, we'll come in and we'll put some coating on those, this one really don't look too bad, looks pretty good. Okay, um, I got your budget. I'm very helpful though. I can't wait for the real thing because the budget one falls over for any reason whatsoever. That's a shame. I wonder if you can weight it down with something. Um, you know, get something, you know, find some way of just getting a little bit of extra weight onto the thing to try and stop it from falling over. Um, it is, it is basically one of the problems with going down the, the budget path. You know, you are not going to get the benefits but particularly with the microscope there's a lot of price difference between the budget and the big one so you've got to be bloody sure it's something you want to do before you invest that sort of dollars those sorts of dollars i mean yeah i mean heat up um 
And with all this stuff, in particular in Australia, where we have to pay more for all this stuff. I mean, my soldering station, my uh, uh, heat up your thing. Uh, the hot air, yeah, hot air station, the soldering station, the microscope, um, everything just costs so much out here. And because I had to get this ship from the States. I mean, this, this um, uh, microscope comes in, you know, box you could fit a small car in. And uh, it, uh, yeah, it was expensive. But I have no regrets. Um, but I perhaps would have regrets if I didn't, if I didn't keep doing this stuff. Pretty joint. For example, we were actually talking Steve from Mac 84 into buying a microscope. And initially, he didn't seem to be taking the bait. He was just like, no, no, no. And then all of a sudden, one night, we're chatting away to him, and he's microscope shopping. And we're like, what? And sure enough, within a matter of days, Mac 84 had a shiny new microscope. And we knew that we had finally given out the right amount of peer pressure. In truth, I know it wasn't us that made him decide. It was the fact that he was doing so much recapping. And he could see how much easier it made it for us. Sorry, you couldn't see that. Uh, yours doesn't have air control. That sucks. Um, putting in FPU because you can... You also take FPU through the LCPDS slot, correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, you can get an LCPDS slot FPU for these. I've seen, I've actually had, uh, uh, I've had someone sent me an LC for uh, recapping that had that. Now, of course, the downside to that is that means your PDS slot is being used if you wanted to put a network card in there. But, of course, keep in mind that some network cards, not all, but some network cards, I don't think this one does, no, some network cards actually have an FPU on them. So if you get lucky, you can get a, a, um, a network card that has an FPU and then you don't need to worry about uh, uh, putting an external FPU on. But this one doesn't. So anyhow. But yes, yes, you are quite correct on that one. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, so I've, I've got two more 47s to put on. So thankfully, they haven't been stolen yet. Uh, one goes Hoya and one goes Hoya. Um, so one of the big differences between budget hot air stations and expensive ones oh crap I should really put UV solar mask on that first shouldn't I oh well I'll, I'll put these on I'll put these on and then I'll do it um, actually I can do that afterwards they're, there's plenty of access there they're not in the way of anything so that's fine um, one of the big differences between the budget and the expensive hot air stations is on the budget ones, they have the fan that controls the airflow in the handle. They have like a little bulge that sticks out the bottom. It's like a little round bulge at the bottom of the, the handle. And because it's a tiny little fan in there, it does limit how much air they can push through. The more expensive ones have actually got the blower, the fan in the base station, and they blow the air through, through the pipe into the uh, hot air station and they can output much more high power air and that's one of the things that makes them uh, better and that's what I like about them but when I very first started this I used a uh, budget hot air station that I picked up for quite cheap um, from my local electronics retailer just up the road and it did the trick it really did i mean I, I sure when i got my better one it was better and i could tell it was better but the old one did the trick the old one was better than having none at all um and i kind of object to some people saying unless you buy quality don't buy anything at all because uh that's just not true with this stuff um having uh 
you know, sort of having those budget ones does still work. How long, how long have we been going for? I started at uh, my time at 11, 12, 1, 2 hours and 46 minutes. Well, congratulations to everyone who's been sticking around. Um, I do want to uh, just get this finished so that we can test it out. I was going to have a look at the floppy drive as well, but I think we might end up getting into my, oh my goodness, I'm hungry, I need lunch type territory. Um, just got Bruce's budget alternative hot air station this week. Yeah. Um, I actually, um, yeah, I want to, I, I need to actually get some of these. Um, budget ones and use them in videos sometimes just to show people the difference. Um, right, so what have we got now? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left to go, or it should be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine left to go. And these are all 10 microfarad, 16 volt. All of them. 10 microfarad, 16 volt, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are Kemet capacitors that I'm using. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the link on my recapping guides links to some 47 microfarad, 16 volts capacitors at Mauser, and they're out of stock. So I need to probably, I mean, I'd really like them to get in stock so I don't need to change the links on my website. Really, really would like that. But I don't know what's going to happen. I might just put some flux on some of these other ones while I'm at it. Bleh, 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 Think so. Think so. Right, let's continue with the soldering. We are getting close to completion on this, and that makes everyone happy. Oops. Because uh, what? Uh, that would make it to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. Eastern. Mm. Starting to get towards people's bedtime. Because I do need to go out and do some shopping today as well. Because I'm going to cook a magnificent feast for dinner tonight. But I have none of the ingredients for cooking a aforementioned feast. So I'll have to go out and buy them. Wiggle test, wiggle test. So we're getting to the point now, you know, um, uh, Steve is recapping so much. He's doing the same that I used to do to him. When I used to watch his streams, I'd be recapping at the same time. Now he's watching my streams and he's recapping at the same time. But you know what, Steve? We're making the world a better place. What are you cooking? That's a good question. I am going to cook up some... Um, uh, what, do they, what do they call them? They call them uh, the cut of meat. I'm basically cooking up cow. Uh, so some steaks. Um, but I'm doing the, uh, what do they call them? The Bushman's cutlet or something like that. I can't remember. It's basically the eye fillet but with the bone on it. So it's a big uh, beef cutlet thingy. And I'm going to cook that up with some, with a mushroom sauce and, uh, Probably some chippies. Um, smelt some bit melting plastic, and I'm like, where's melting? And I think I just spotted where. We're going to have a look at my melty work. Um, <laughs> the boards are in the cleaner. I'm itching to do another. Yeah, that's how it goes. Look, 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 melted. 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 Right. Uh, so this is the trick that I do when I accidentally melt something like this. You get the scalpel. I cut that way. And cut that way. 
And now you'd never know. I mean, seriously, you'd never know. I mean, we're looking at this through a microscope. It's, still, it's barely visible there. Um, all right, more caps, more caps. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we, we need content from Dana. We've been pushing him. He's been having some trouble with the live streams. So, uh, ah, ah, different brand. Ah, different brand. Can't have that. My OCD will go nuts. That one was an AVX cap. These ones are gamuts. Gamut, gamut, gamut. So I shall have to grab another from the container. As I'm putting these on, I'm looking out to make sure that I don't have too much solder on that one, folks. And it's fine, but it's, you know, come on. I mean, come on. Um, what was I say? Oh, I was saying something. I totally lost the thread now. Because I too much soldered. Crooked. That one looks a little bit crooked too, actually. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. When I have crooked ones, what I usually do is I bend them back into shape on the other side. Can they line up? Can they line up? Yeah, I'll tell you what I do. I'll get at least deposit this solder here. <sighs> That's better. Pull off all the sound chips. No. Uh, non repairable PCs. Do you toss them? Save them for parts yet? Yeah. Save them for parts. Always. Always save them for parts. You never know. Um, I basically keep, I mean, you've got to store them, obviously, but I basically keep a stack of donor boards um, that I can use. I've got one right here. This is a, uh, uh, a, a Macintosh 2SI we were talking about earlier. This is a Macintosh 2SI board with some terrible battery corrosion, and this is a spare that I keep. Um, and you can see I've already raided a bunch of uh, RAM slots off there and various other bits and pieces. So yeah, always keep uh, those. Um, so are we going to be able to convince uh, Steve to live stream once I've finished? We've done it before. Do you reckon we can do it again? Another one. The wrong one. Or is it the same one? Uh, neighbor here is doing a burnout in their own backyard, Bathurst. Well, I can tell you one thing for sure. You do not need to go all the way to Bathurst for that. We don't have that here as well. But then again, I am in a fairly um, bogan part of the world here. Careful. See, that's a word you don't hear enough, is it? Isn't it? Piffle. So there's a contrast on that. I've just got a perfect amount of solder on that one. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, 
for a non-working ISA card like a video card. Well, you're asking the wrong person there. I wouldn't know what to do with an ISA card. You'll have to ask for the opinions of others. Just gonna get a solar under that copper before I start. You will be live streaming something with Mike tomorrow. Ooh. Ooh. You going there or is he going to you? Just a reminder, folks, Mike from Mike's Mac yet. Yeah. We should uh, mention, of course, uh, you know, Mac84, Steve Mac84. Those of you who don't know him, do jump on and subscribe. Same for Mike, Mike's Mac yet. And of course, Mike, Mike's Mac Yak, Mike's Mac Shack. And of course, Mac Yak is another thing very important to subscribe to if you haven't already. That's where we all get together and chat about the world of Macs and Apple. Modern stuff, old stuff, good stuff, bad stuff, everything. Everything. And. We have a lot of fun while we're doing it as well. We had a lot of good laughs and the show from yesterday. Much fun. Oh, Ron's computer videos. Thank you very much. Another great stream. I'm off to computer, re computer reset on Sunday. Wish me luck. Tell us a little bit about computer reset. If you wouldn't mind. Okie dokie. Um, Mac Yak, a hairy beast from Scotland. <laughs> um, right, so I think I've got just one, two caps left. And the reason why I have two caps left is because I accidentally had two of a different brand. And unless there's another one on the board here, or maybe the capacitor fairy stole one, which could well be the case. Let's see if we can get two more here. Uno, duo. Yep, these are the right ones. So let's plonk one down here. Right there. And I think, is this one the right way? I'll just check and make sure. Yes, they're all pluses facing that way. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look here. Giant warehouse in Texas filled with retro goodies. Computer reset. Oh, that sounds awesome. Do you get to buy them? Whose goodies are they? And are they going for good prices? Oh, my exes live in Texas. Oopsie. Ooh, I'm starting to get an attack of the hungries. I had a big breakfast and I was like, oh, I'm not going to need lunch. But <laughs> I'm starting to doubt myself now. Um, these are the last two caps, by the way, so we'll be testing in a moment. And then we'll FPU arise. That's a pretty quick exercise. I just want to make sure I test this before FPUing, just uh, so that we can have a before and after. 
in case there are any problems. I might need, I did this, I did this wrong. I just want to let everyone know that what I did here, I did wrong uh, with a capital rot because I have um, soldered myself into a corner. Um, I should have soldered this one on first and then soldered this one on, but no, no, that would have been way too clever. This is a Branca string. <laughs> right, let's go and do a quick little check here. We've got a solder, 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 solder. I'll just like to go in and make sure that all these things are all stuck on good. Good stuck on. Stuck, stuck. Stuck, stuck, stuck. Just giving them a nudge on each side. That wasn't one of mine. Nudge on each side. Um, let's go to here. Nudgy, nudgy. Nudgy, nudgy. Nudgy, nudgy. Make sure the polarities are right. Positive, positive. Positive, positive, positive. Are you positive? Yeah, I'm positive. Positive, 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 positive. I'm planning to do a video talking about, um, well, you know, I've recapped my Mac and it still doesn't work. What do I do now? Because I've been seeing quite a few of these and I do want to go through some of the checks and things that I go through if I have recapped something and it doesn't work afterwards. Okay, let's uh, let's connect this up to some power and see if it goes ding. I won't lose any sleep if it doesn't because it hasn't been cleaned. But just for the sake of finishing these streams off in a happy fashion, we always like it <clears throat> when it goes ding. Put the fan on there so that we know it's me. No, this is that. No, that's right. Um, and we'll put the VRAM in just in case I decide to attach a screen to the thing. Yeah, come on. There we go. And then we'll get a little power supply that we recapped before. Wasn't that fun? There it is. Up here. Uh, that's a really dumb view to be looking at. That's an even dumber one. There we go. Why? There we go. Okay. Get on. Get on there. Come on. Right. So we've got that there. We're going to get some power. We're going to plug it in. We're going to hope that I got everything right here because, you know, I do make mistakes from time to time. I generally prefer not to do that with customers' boards. In we go. Fan spins. No chime. I am going to put the RAM in it. I'm going to set the configuration up exactly as it was when I tested it before. So I'm going to put this RAM in here. And I'm probably even going to connect the screen to it. Just because I don't like the fact that it didn't make any noise. It upsets me. It upsets me terribly. Keeping in mind, as I say, that it hasn't been cleaned. Uh, there could be some damaged traces in there. or traces that got damaged during all that cleaning process. Um, put that there and there. We'll get my stupid little screen. Everyone's familiar with this screen now, I reckon. Uh, I'd love to be able to just broadcast this into the live stream, but I do not have the tools to do that. Um... Connecting a screen. There we go. And power this up. Bing. Okay. Okay, so we've got some RAM. That's um, all good. Oh, I instantly got a chimed. Just needed the RAM in it for whatever reason. Perhaps there's something wrong with this RAM here. I might need to look into that. But it chimed as soon as I put that RAM in. So something something going on there so did they just use the same power supply in all the lcs no they didn't um 
Don't worry about these vertical lines. That's just a moray pattern happening with this screen. That's actually fine. Um, so um, the there were two different versions. There was the TDK version of the power supply. Then there was the Aztec version of the power supply. And I think someone told me that the 475605 has a slightly higher power power supply. And we've got the flashing question mark. We're feeling good about that. So uh, Madeline says, yay. I always like that. Customer says, yay. When customer says, yay, Brankus is happy. See, I just referred to myself in the third person by my business name. How weird is that? Um, all right. So next thing we need to do now is stick the FPU on. And then we'll try it again. And then I might even connect a hard drive to it. We'll see if it boots. I'll leave the RAM in. I don't need to take that out until I clean it. I'm going to do that afterwards. So we've already taken all the solder out of the, the little holes there. We're going to stick a socket on. I've got a socket here somewhere. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Socket? Where do you suppose I put it? Maybe I never brought it down in the first place. <clears throat> we can put the caps out of the way. You don't need them anymore. Ah, that's that one. No, it won't be in there, I don't think. You watch. I'm going to look through all of these, and then it'll be somewhere really obvious. Ah, nope. Nope. Uh, I've got another misc here. Miscellaneous. I know I've got one socket left. I need to order some more. Or I might have already ordered some more. I have to check. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it must be down here. It must be down here. Is it under something? Next to something? Oh, it's right here staring at me in the face. Idiot. And here it is. One PLCC socket. Just like that. Um, right. So LC and LC2 definitely have the same power supply. Yes, indeed. Um, now, keeping in mind that I've done plenty of LC2 power supplies before, I've never come across an Aztec before. All the ones I've done before have been TDK. So my LC2 had a TDK power supply. This one, Aztec. Weird. So I, they obviously have the same output, but they're different brands of it. So... Um, we are watching the breakers. <laughs> so, um, what I've got here is a socket. Um, the way these are labeled, you know, there are two ways you know which way around they are. First of all, one of them may have a one edge is curved, um, which is this edge. This one is curved here. But the other thing you have is, if you can see it, you can see the little arrow. That arrow points to pin one. So I'm going to make sure that arrow points to pin one when I put it on this board. Because in actual fact, these pins here, I can put this on one of four different ways. And only one of them is the right way. So on the board, um, we have a nice little friendly dot just here, which you can see. And that little friendly dot tells us where pin one is. So I just need to make sure that arrow is pointing to pin one. So when I put this on, look at that. How easy was that? Just went straight into the holes. Whee. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to do a little trick that I do sometimes because I only have two hands. Now, any people out there that have three hands don't really need to worry about this. But if you're like me and you only have two hands, this is what I do to hold this in. I'm holding it in with one hand, which means I need to solder with the left, the remaining hand that I have. And generally, that's quite difficult because you need to hold the solder in one hand and the soldering iron in the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to actually put some flux onto one of these pins. Now, what the flux is going to allow me to do, it's going to allow me to have the solder on the iron and then just melt it onto the pin. So I will get, I just better zoom out, I'm, I better zoom out a smidge because you can't see everything. Everything. All right. So I'm going to grab a little, oh, it's the wrong thing. Uh, okay. I'm going to grab some solder onto the end of the iron. I'm going to go to that one where I have a blob of flux there. And the flux is going to make that solder transfer across onto the pin like that. You can't see it because it's too small. But just trust me, it did. Uh, then I'm going to do one on the other side. A little bit of flux there. 
get some solder onto the end of the iron, get it across here, get it nice and hot. Flux will make that solder jump across onto the pin. And that is enough to then hold that in position for us to solder the rest of them on. Could you not tape it in place? I sure could, but imagine how long that would have taken me. I mean, come on. Um, we'd be here until dinner time. Use blue tack. It's done. We don't need to. It's done. Come on. Get hot. Get hot. Thank you. You're not getting hot. Yes, you are. Uh, right. So, we're done. We don't need to uh, discuss different ways of holding it in place because it's done. Alright, we're going to get some uh, sudo. We're going to work our way around. This is slow, but tedious, but it doesn't take too long. I uh, don't like this solder. I'm going to use different solder. It's better. So much better. Now, when I'm soldering, uh, the key is to get both, as I mentioned quite a lot, I mentioned in my beginning guide, beginner's guide to soldering, I mentioned this in, my, uh, in a lot of my live streams, when you're soldering, you want to get uh, the two things you're soldering hot, not just one of them. So when I'm putting my iron here, I'm putting the end in so that I'm getting heat onto that hole and I'm getting heat onto the pin. And we're a little bit blurry, a little bit, a little bit. And just work my way around. There's a bit of repetition, but as you can see, it's a lot quicker than removing the solder, which I did earlier. Get into a bit of a flow. I can see the chat happening in the corner, right out of the corner of my eye, but I'm unable to read it out of the corner of my eye. Um, I must have missed what was wrong with the old FPU. It didn't have one because Apple cheaped out on the LC2. No FPU. It didn't have one. He's adding an FPU. Um, okay, thanks, Dana. And poor things just had a naked socket sitting there looking all suspicious. Yes, yeah, so this was something that I mentioned at the beginning of the live stream, and that is that ultimately um, Apple designed this board so that it could have a socketed FPU. But they want that you know as we've sort of said several times with these lcs they 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 didn't want these competing with their pro market they were selling things like the 2ci for an absolute mozza and so they didn't want things like the lc coming in and stealing that you know those those people if someone said oh look this lc only goes up to 10 megs i want to be able to stick 32 megs in mine it's like oh okay well you need to go buy something more expensive and uh, they just took that, that extra step with the old LC2 and uh, um, took the, um, decided to not even put a socket on, even though this computer was designed to accept an FPU in a socket. But this is what we are resolving. We are resolving Apple's cheapness now. And we're turning this into the LC that never was. I've already done this to mine. I've already done this to several, actually. I always offer it as an option. I say to people when they, do you want me to put an FPU in? And they say, uh, does it make any difference? I mean, oh, well, you know, if you put it on a benchmark test, it does. I mean, it'll show that in terms of whether it makes a big difference in real world use. I'm not really sure about that, but you know, it does actually help it with floating point calculations. So if you're doing floating point calculations, then yeah. But at the end of the day, I just always feel with these, it's like, well, you know, let's just, let's just make it everything it could be. And because these days FPUs are so cheap, back in the old days you would spend quite a lot of money getting an FPU, but not not now. I get them for like five bucks or something like that. I, don't quote me on that; it may not be five bucks, but it's cheap. Now, of course, when I install these, I charge more than five dollars, because you can see. I'm doing more than $5 worth of work. 
putting this on. Uh, yes, FPU co-pressor. So it's a uh, FPU stands for floating point unit, which is also known as a math co-pressor. The reason why it's math is a floating point. Anyone who, who does any work with databases will know that when they refer to a float number, it means it's a um, uh, an integer number is a number from zero to what is it? One thousand six one. I don't know. I don't know. It's like how many bits? How many bits in an integer? I can't remember. But anyhow, float is a much bigger number with decimal places and stuff like that. So it's uh, yeah. That was a really bad explanation. That was that was no help whatsoever. But anyhow, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, we've got a socket. Socket to me. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Is that a beautiful socket? Delicious. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so let's go in and grab uh, an FPU now. As I say, I just bought a whole batch of these. So we're about to go and find out whether I got the genuine article or someone sent me some fakes. I've bought from these people before and they have been the genuine article. So I'm fairly confident we'll be all right, but... You know, some people are unscrupulous. At least it came in a little anti-static bag. Isn't that cute? Two gums. There we go. Now, what we're looking for here is we're looking for an M. Oops. An M to tell us that it is Motorola. But here's the main way that people generally test to see. Go and get a uh, cotton bud or a Q-tip like this, and we get onto this printing, and we give it a good old rub. And then we uh, dry that away, and see if it's still there, which it is, which is promising. Because often when they do counterfeit chips, they uh, they just sort of print onto the top, and that print just comes off quite easy. Um, so let's put the FPU on, and this at this particular juncture, I mean this needs cleaning, so I can't leave it this way. So this this needs to go in now. So we've got a dot, we've got a dot on the the chip here. Can you see the dot? That dot shows us that it's pin one. So that dot needs to line up with the little arrow that we have in the socket. There's the arrow. So we're going to just go and get this and plonk him on there and give him a good old push down. There we go. So now we've got our FPU in. Looking nice. Okay, so let's now get, ow, get that out of the way and not squash my finger in the process because that would be bad. And then we will do a few things. First thing, I'm going to reach into my pocket I'm going to grab SCSI 2ST, version 5.5. I'll attach this onto the back here now. It probably won't boot from this because I don't have any internal termination going on. So I'll probably have to connect the hard drive to this just to provide some termination. Ah, oh, excuse me. Um, then we need a screen. We need a power supply. Let's move all the stuff out of the way. We don't really need the fan because it's not going to do anything. It's just blowing air in, in a, nowhere. Uh, I need to grab the speaker, uh, which is around here somewhere. That's good. I don't want to lose it because it's not mine. And I am all about not losing things that aren't mine. Well, uh, I need a keyboard. See how optimistic I am just connecting all these things up like it's going to work. And where did I put the power supply? I put it around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Uh, Dorker. And that screen that we had before, which we were looking at before, before. I am sorry about having to use this screen. Oh, wow. What did I just do? Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Um... Right, there we go. So here's the screen. Here's the screen. Uh, I just want you guys to be able to see it without it actually accidentally creating all sorts of problems. So you can see it a little bit there now. 
not see it brilliantly, but you can see it a little bit. Let's connect that up. This is really, really hinky, this, isn't it? All this. What a mess. What a mess, guys. What a mess. Okay. I'm, I'm hooked on something here. Ah. And don't anyone get smart and say you need to clean your desk. I know I need to clean my desk. Right. Okay. Okay. We're all connected. We're all fired up. We're all good to go. Okay. Is everyone excited? I'm excited. Uh, I didn't get a chime, but it did start up. Is that funny? We got chimes sometimes, but not other times. What have I forgotten? So it's that's almost definitely because of this sound chip being absolutely covered in goop. So I'm probably just going to clean that up, and I think we should be okay. Um, let's see what happens with this. Or of course, they could have a problem. It might be an issue with that FPU. It's the first time I've tried it with it, so anything is possible. Uh, I am going to get my little FPU remover here all ready to whip it out in case there are problems. And I do have uh, an FPU that I bought earlier, but maybe okay. You generally tell if they're not right because they get really hot. That, seems, that one seems okay, it's not getting hot. Um, but we're definitely not uh, a happy camper here, so let's just take that FPU out and we can try another one. Yeah. Out she comes. So let's just try and switch it on now without the FPU. Got a chime. With the FPU, no chime. So, is this a problem FPU? Possibly. Um, let me just have a quick look. It's a 40 megahertz one. We'll grab another one from the same batch. We'll try that. And then if that doesn't work, we'll go back to my original batch, which I know do work because, because I know this. Oh, chaos, world in crisis. Okay, let's try this one. This is why it's always good to buy new things before the old ones run out. Yes, sir. Okay, so there's this one. I'm going to plonk that on there. Try that one. Oh, that one did shine. Okay, so I maybe didn't have this in properly. I mean, I will test this one again because, you know, I mean, I don't want to just automatically assume that the problem was this FPU. It could be something else. But we did get a chime that time. Oh, and we are booting. Oh, uh, we're, we're moving into the next phase. Oh, and it's even having a think about that uh, SCSI 2SD, but it isn't going to boot from it. It probably won't because, as I said, it's not internally terminated, but we have ways of getting around that. Yeah, I'm getting the old uh, question mark here because the bus is not terminated. Bus is not terminated. So, oh, excuse me. Wow, old man noises. Um, what I need to do is I need to grab the hard drive out of this and I need to plug it in. Uh, I don't need to power it up, just need to plug it in. We're just going to borrow it for its termination skills. <sighs> Sorry, you guys can't see this so good. I can't see that too good. Now I can't see it at all. Oh, it's still not burning, is it? Uh, I'm going to try this. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I will plug this in with the power. So that we can get termination power. It'll probably just boot from it now. But but that's fine. The main thing is I want to be able to access this drive. I don't necessarily need to boot from it. I want to access it because I've got a benchmark tool on there. And we can have a look at the FPU being all FPU-y. Oh, it's still not doing its thing. Hard drive only just started spinning up. 
I'm not sure if the hard drive is too heavy. I'm going to just do a little thing here, as I do sometimes. You've seen me do things before. I'm going to go, whoopsie, oh wow, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Ding. Shift option, command, delete. This is being very pesky, isn't it? I'm just going to take this off for a sec. See if it starts up off the internal hard drive. Doesn't seem to be making any starty uppy noises. I mean, we know that we've got power going to the SCSI because. What's the key for restarting these? I keep trying some, but they don't seem to be working. I should zoom out, shouldn't I? I'm not sure if there's a system on this. I can feel it starting up, but it's just not booting from it. And of course, the other problem I have is that I know that I was working on this SCSI to SD recently, and I was having problems with it. So I have some real concerns that are... Uh, Maybe the system needs a bit of a, you know, a Norton Utilities on it. It'd be a real shame if I couldn't get this to boot just because of things. Um, let's see what I can conjure up. I've got, I do have other hard drives around. You know what I can do? I can duck up and grab the hard drive out of my LC2, which I know boots. So... Okay, I'm going to do that. Four more hours to go. Uh -huh. No, sir. All right, I am going to be right back. I'm just going to pop up and I'm grab, going to grab another hard drive. So sit tight if you're uh, prepared to wait and we will see if we can get this thing to boot up. Need to zoom out here a little bit, a bit close up. <sighs> okay, so uh, I've got this hard drive here. This has got DOS Do's patcher on it, so this is running Catalina. Um, 
We're going to try that on this LC. <laughs> Can you imagine? How safe? Right. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, dear. It's not possible. It's just not possible. Oh, I see some flashing lights now. Yeah, we got some bootage. We're burning off this hard drive here, not this hard drive here, but the fact that that one did blink is a good sign. So, uh, and look at that. Welcome to Macintosh. Are you feeling welcome? I wonder if I can turn the brightness down on this thing. Uh, let me just, oops, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. There we go. Let me just uh, quickly fix up this picture a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. There we go. Now we don't have all of that horrible vertical lines. Okay, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Hey, what? What are you doing? What are you doing to me here? And then I'm just going to turn the brightness down on this because... Oh, it's already down. It's on its lowest brightness. Jeez, this must go bright. Okay, alright. So I might have to just turn the camera down a little bit so you can see things a little bit better. Ah. I'm going the wrong way. Hey. Why? What? 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 And this isn't really the best form of screen sharing, but it is what I have, and so it is what we'll have to deal with. We must all learn to deal with adversity. All right. 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 Left. With the FPU and everything this is. So let's go here to control panels. I have to do it this way because I can't do it that way. And we'll go to monitors and we'll want to get some luscious colours going on here. We're in this dull old monochrome. 256 beautiful colours. There we go. Isn't that nice? And you can see I've got my hard disk primer here open because that's what I'm doing all the time formatting hard drives system 7 disk 1 we're using system 7.1 on this I think it's probably a bit much for this but let's just check the RAM situation black Benny RAM a lamb come on I'm using oh what oops I just accidentally went to the screensaver Uh, what did I want to do? I wanted to go about this Macintosh. About, eh. Eh. We have total memory 8. So that basically tells us that it is 4 on board. Because we know that we have two 2's in there. So that gives us our 8. And then we want to go to... What's that one called? It's called... Speed, that's wrong keyboard. Sp -e -e. Speedometer or something like that? No, is that what it's called? I can't remember. No, what's the name of the Mac Bench? No, we don't want Mac Bench, it takes donkey's years. Uh, come on. This is so tedious. Speedometer! A little bit of speedometer four. Yes, I know Mac Bench works, but Mac Bench benchmarks take ages to run. It actually reminds me I need to do some Mac Bench benchmarks, bench, bench, bench. Because I need to test uh 
the speed of a SCSI 2SD 4, compare it to a 5 and a 5.1. Uh, right, so let's go and test some tests and run all tests. Okay. And then we'll uh, call it a day after this. So, uh, which, which disk? Which disk we'll use? Ah, oh, that one will do. It's going to be using external SCSI to SD there, which is as slow as anything. So, is the SCSI to SD video coming out soon? Are you talking about the building your own SCSI to SD video? Uh, it will be. I hit a bit of a snag, and I need to resolve that snag. And then once that is resolved, I will then be doing the video. Um, but yes, it is coming, and assuming, of course, that snag is not insurmountable. If it's insurmountable, then there will be no video. If it is something that I can resolve, then yes, that will be added to the video. So, um, um, yeah, I, I need, to, there will be caveats right throughout that video in that it's, it's going to take some serious dedication for anyone who actually wants to go in and make their own. Uh, this is one of the things that I'm finding. For me, it's, a, it's, it's, it's justifiable, and it's justifiable for me because um, I, I have so many Macs that need a SCSI to SD. So I can afford to spend the money on buying all of these components to punch out a whole stack of these. Um, but if you're in a situation where you're thinking, like, hey, I want to buy one or two, uh, going down this path would not really be my recommendation. Um, I, I, I don't think it's it's the best way to go. But I, I will outline all that in the video, and I'll go through the process and explain how easy or difficult certain steps are. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we are with that. So, at the moment, I think it is actually doing floating point calculations. I think this benchmark thing, I could be wrong, is actually, this is all the floating point calculations that we're seeing here at the moment. So this is where that FPU will be getting uh, getting put through its paces. But also, more importantly, if there is a problem with this FPU, we would be more likely to see this computer flash, crash and fall down during this stage. And it it's, seems to be going fine. So I, I really don't think that first FPU was bad. I think I might have just not got it into the socket properly. But, um, but I will try it again and we'll see. Because, you know, I'd, I'd rather not have a dead one. Okay, here we go. Oh, no, here's the FPU benchmarks. Sorry, that was all just CPU up there. So what we're now looking at are the FPU benchmarks. Uh, Quadra 650, it said, was equal to 1. So we're never going to end up at 1. Quadra 650 is a 6, uh, 6804O chip. Um, so obviously this is going to be way under the rating of a, uh, a Quadra 650, but, you know. You know, this is good. <laughs> Thank you for that information there. I, is Haley in the way I say your name? Um, I, did I get it working? How dare you, Mike? How dare you say that? Of course I got it working. Hallian, okay. I would have thought the little thingy on top of the A changed the pronunciation of the A from an A sound. But I um, I will get it right next time. Hallian. We're now just looking at uh, GPU benchmarks at the moment, which are, of course, very, very fascinating and interesting. Busy cleaning wasn't watching. Oh, it's a uh, Mike, you're lucky. You're lucky. You're lucky it's you. <clears throat> hmm. Yep, so the next step after this, once we've had a look at these benchmarks, had a little, a little sneak peek at what they look like, and we'll probably hopefully be able to compare them to an actual LC2 and see if it's, you know, a bit higher with the FPU in there. Next step for this is I'm going to whip everything off, going to take off the uh, 
the RAM and the VRAM and I'll pop out the SPU and I drop it into the old owl over my shoulder here, the big old uh, ultrasonic cleaner, get it all looking sparkling. I might actually switch on the heater. I might, I might, I might. Start heating up the water in that thing. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so just to confirm, Steve, you're not going to live stream when I'm finished. Is that correct? It's a no on the live stream after me. We are live streaming tomorrow, but not tonight. Sure, I'll stream. The better. <clears throat> okay, so just want to have a quick look here. Um, just to see. Yep. Well, I don't know how many viewers I've got there, but it's uh, showing me 52 concurrent viewers. I could be wrong. Um, right, so... Tests are done. Let's go in and have a look at these results. And we will go up here to our analysis system comparison. And I'm going to grab machine records here. Hopefully this has a good selection of machines for us to compare to. Come on. There we go. Right. So we are on the left and we're on the right as well. But let's go and see what we can compare it to. Oop. We've got LC2, isn't that great? So we can see how it compares to an actual LC2. And look at that. Look at this gap. Look at this gap right here. This gap. With no floating points. So, uh, CPU, same. You know, all these ones here, they're pretty much the same. CPU, graphics. The disk is slower on this because I was running it from the external SCSI to SD. Uh, math, well, this is obviously much higher because this has a floating point. So this has got a rating of 0.88 compared to this 0.72 that we see over here. So that's clearly an improvement. Uh, and then, of course, we see down here that these there's no rating for FPU on that side because the LC2 is not meant to have one. But, you know, we're rebels here at Brancus. Um, so we decided to put one in there anyway. Okay, well, I think that's um, probably about all we're going to do in this live stream. Now, I was planning on working on the floppy drive as well, but we have well and truly smashed through that three hour mark. And I think that's probably enough for one day. So, uh, um, yeah. Um, and I can tell that Catalina runs like a dog on this thing. So, um, so, uh, yeah, so the floppy drive, the reason why I was going to feature the floppy drive is the fact that it actually has, um, this is the, Ah, manual inject ah, ah, floppy. this is the manual eject floppy drive here so you can see and what you will see up here one two three surface mount electrolytic capacitors that are going to need to be changed and in order to do that that's a bit of a trick because this board has to be removed so it has to be undone and then lifted off and stuff like that it's a real pain so it's too much to do i think in tonight's in tonight's well, i say tonight it's still not my time here but today's live stream but uh link for my stream when bruce is done folks if you're still in the mood for some recapping and working and stuff and things like that and things jump across and check out steve's stream i may not be able to see much of it because i've got to go out shopping but i will certainly catch as much of it as i can so um Thank you to all. I would like to thank everyone for viewing. I'd like to thank everyone for hopping on. Thank you to everyone for super chats that they put on there and for the questions and keeping me entertained while I work and all that sort of stuff. So uh, big thank you to everyone. Um, Sweet on 68K only. No, Speedometer 4, 3 might be. The six. The Speedometer version 4 is definitely uh, has 60, uh, 6804 computers as well. Um, and then, and then just, just checking the chat here, make sure I haven't missed anything. When are you going to move to New York? Sorry. Sorry. See if you can get Lewis Rossman to do it. Um, okay. So excellent. All right. Well, I am going to uh, sign off now, people. So thank you to everyone. Have a, have a really good night, morning, whenever. Don't forget to jump across and check out Steve's stream, you know, so, uh, just keep, uh, keep the, keep the flow. 
and I will see you at the next one, which will hopefully be next week. So bye all. Have a good one.